Check, one, two, two. How's it going, gang? Tiny in the house? Oh, boom. Hello, gang. From M MacArthur Park near downtown Los Angeles. MacArthur Park, which is melting in the dark. And I'll never have that recipe again. If no one knows what I'm talking about, go and listen to the... Richard Harris version of MacArthur Park, a song written by Jimmy Webb. It is the fucking weirdest song in the world, and it's about old dudes playing Chinese checkers across the street. But I digress. Harmontown is now in session. Let's bring out Spencer Crittenden, everybody. What's good, Spencer? I don't know, man. I know, I know it's kind of good, yeah. sometimes great. Our mayor, Mr. Dan Harmon. Yeah. Yeah, I know I can recognize less applause than for Spencer. I know what it sounds like. I'm happy to see him too. Uh, I also yep. felt like I got less applause. Not that I deserve then it. Who? Just, I don't know. I get the, the I, last I, applause. I get, it's my fault. I gave lackluster intro. So I, okay. I, I, I normally go. I'm glad you brought that up. Right, I'm go, glad to hear both, you say it. Both of you go because back. Because if no, I ever no, accused you of doing it, I'd be the biggest dick in the world. But, but I do I don't think wanna, that you taper. I think you handicap your intros. I don't want to make the audience try again. That seems rude. to Yeah, me. no. Uh, that then they're like, oh, so the shit it's rolls on all us? the way down yeah. to us, where we we're at now. We're at Sea World. Come on, I can't hear you. This is a dying whale. Pretend it's not dying. <laughs> it, just let, leave them alone. Uh, they're, 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 let them be in the splash zone of comfort. I wasn't trying to ha like to kneecap you. Or, your I don't no, trust. no, it's good. I, I, don't, I actually made the mistake of thinking that I, if I just really laid it down subtly, that there would be kind of a weird like. I've I've never thought that you were doing anything de deliberately. Yeah. I, 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 I miss you, and I love you. It's good to see you it's again. It's good to see you again. Oh, I yeah. missed you. I missed both of you. How, how's things? What have I missed? I don't know. I mean, we only ever see each other, the three of us, up here. It's true. Let's talk about Spencer's beard trim. I cut it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I shit. I, I was going to ask you if you had lost weight, but just your hair lost weight. I lost, like, 30 pounds of beard <laughs> hair. Did you keep it for, like, like, the Smithsonian or anything? I kept it for wizard spells. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. You look you look like a very successful almond brother. Thanks. <laughs> That's what I was going for. He's the, he's the least talented almond brother. He's the one that booked all their gigs. <laughs> he's got all the publishing rights. Oh, Taiki Almond. Put up all the flyers when he was 20. Like, guys, come on. Greg, uh, Tyler. Uh... <laughs> I don't even know the Almond Brothers. I don't know either. I know one's named Greg. But yeah, one's name, name, name one more Almond Brother than Greg, and you, well, want, yeah. you want a toaster. Uh, well, you're, but you're the one that played tambourine and booked the gigs. That's good. That sounds that's like a, me. That's a very big compliment when it comes to self-care. Oh. Because the other Almonds are like, who cares? Uh, I'd rather die. You know that? That's part of your, your limited knowledge of the Almond Brothers? Because I'm, I'm at zero. I really don't know. I'm projecting. It sounds I, like they play music. Yeah, they play music. Okay, and they're brothers. That's interesting. All right, I mean, can, we, can not, we talk about your tomorrow? I'm getting surgered. Yeah, you're going in for surgery. Yeah, yeah. I was feeling okay about it until the anesthesiologist called me and was like, "You're gonna be in pain, but we're hoping to get you from a sharp stabbing, ripping pain to a dull throbbing pain." I was like, "Jesus Christ!" During the surgery, or well, it wasn't specific, and so yeah, I don't know. And then I remembered my roommate was like, "Oh yeah, the last time I got surgery, they said you woke up and were crying out in pain," <laughs> but she didn't remember it. And I'm like, "I don't know. I guess it's a little better to not remember it, but it still seems terrible to go through." What What are you getting surgered? What am I getting surgered? My hip. My left hip, which is great, because lately my right hip has been hurting. So, <laughs> well, yeah. What, gonna... what is it? Is, is it bone shearing kind of stuff, or what's going I on? I got. Let's see. Femoral acetabular impingement, which means you know the. I've. It's a great story. I've told it a lot of times. The the you know the, the hip is a ball and socket joint, Jeff. Yeah. And the ball is not shaped right. It's got too much ball going on. And so they're going to get rid of some of the ball, and then hopefully it's not going to 
pop out. Well, pop out is too violent. It, it kind of it kind of gets strained. You know, like when you have a, a an action figure and you kind of pull his arm too much back and it comes a little bit out of the joint, but it's not popped out. That happens, and when that happens, it grinds the soft tissues, not unlike a meat grinder or slamming cartilage. your door into a car into a or slamming your hand into a door. What causes it's identical it? to what Co- Cody has? Yeah, she has it on the other end, right? The she has the socket rather than the ball, right? Something like that. Yeah, something's misshapen, so the right. mortar and the pestle are just grinding cartilage. Yeah. So it, she tried. Yeah, I know it's fucked up, but we're all dying. Yeah. I, it, but it's better that we just fucking deal with it it actually uplifts us I think allegedly just be like we're melting we're dying we're you know melting, what you gotta get you gotta get that CBD yeah yeah <laughs> str- tonight's episode is brought to you by uh, Charlotte's Web Chill CBD Brothers. oils yeah. just throw a little CBD on that we can't that. tell you why because so, it's not legal to do so, so but what, do it. What are they cutting open? They're going to. My understanding is they're gonna they're gonna make a slight incision on the hip, pump the opening full of saline, such to separate the muscle fibers without slicing them apart, and then going through the gaps, not unlike a submarine traversing the barrier reef. Is that something submarines re- traverse? They'll get in there. They'll grind down, they'll suck out the bones, they'll take all the shredded... Suck out the bones? I'm not... I'm now I anti-vax. Ate the bones. You suck out the bones I'm like, for no, Henry medical. Jones, because Henry Jones don't eat no meat. Don't suck out the bones. Huh? Don't suck out the bones. Don't suck that, out that's the bones. Uh, yeah, you, you, right. You've taken Sorry. a Hippocratic Oath to not suck out bones. You mean right. suck them out like, like, like they're actually like going to jack them out. Well, they're going to get a Dremel in there. They're going to grind away at the bones, and then that'll, that'll leave not sawdust, but bone dust. If you're, if, you're at a Tony Roma's, dust? if you're at a Tony Roma's rib joint, suck out the bones. <laughs> If oh, you're yeah. a doctor, suck on the bones. Suck, well, you can suck, suck out the marrow. Out the bones. You can suck out the bones. Yeah. You can suck out the bones. Yeah. But suck there, if, if you cook the rib for long enough, you could suck the bones right out. So your socket, your socket is what? My socket's great. My ball is too big. <laughs> it's oval. It's interesting to me that there's a distinct that they draw a distinction because my fiance apparently has the opposite, but right. it sounds identical. Right. Because the if the ball and socket aren't working together. How do you know which is to blame? Well, x-rays. You could just see. But you could you could fix the problem by changing either, right? They're either working together or they're not. Yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, it, you could probably, but you'd be, you know, there's extra bone somewhere, so you want to take out the extra yeah. bone. You could take out the normal bone to make way for the extra bone, but that's probably degrading the structural integrity of the bone. I'm sure it is. There's an ideal. Yeah. What am I doing? I, I, I want these people to go to eight years of school. Right. I don't want to know more than them. So, <laughs> are you going to live in that world? Uh, general anesthesia for this? Yeah. Good I'm hoping fits. to die. <laughs> it's weird because they always say, say, they say there's like a chance if you go under, you won't come up. But like if there's that good of a chance, I don't think they do that. You know? I have said, and I asked you, you've been under before. Yeah. My wisdom teeth. I got a butt thing. How, how many people here? Let's, how put many, a, let's put a pin in your butt thing. Right. How many That's people what they here did. have been uh, absolutely under for a medical procedure? Uh, uh, okay, that's good that you raised and your hand. And you're all alive, huh? The, the whole Holy audience. Shit. That's the entire fucking audience. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think wisdom teeth is a pretty common one. You but generally that, go under that for that. Does that count? I don't want to high road you guys. You definitely go under. But I've had scopies. I don't know if your tooth procedures count. I think that's more no, but but I I the thi- I haven't gone through a couple of uh, scopies like endo. That's what I'm getting. Um, and I had like a they put a slit. They did a biopsy thing. Um, they had to get some shit out of there. So twice now I've been put under. Right. And I've come to realize that. Because uh, I remember, and I've, I've talked about this on the show before, but like the first time is the anesthesiologist came to me and said, do you have any questions? And I said, will I dream? And she said, nope. Nope. And it was such a fast answer. And I was like, what the fuck is with the fast answer? Like, like shouldn't they it know be subjective? Shouldn't, shouldn't it be like, well, it depends on your religion. Well, I, um, I have some answers for that. There's different kinds of sleep. And, and when, I st- when I smoked a lot of weed, I stopped dreaming. And apparently... When there's drugs like uh, like the what do you call it? The, what's the night the sleeping drug that everyone takes? CBD, bro. No, not melatonin. The <laughs> it's like the C- butterfly uh, 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 to the uh, uh, Netflix. Lunesta, let's say. Um, yeah, Lunesta. Netflix. It's that, one of those. That's, that, where you, that's where you have a potato chip and poop. Oh no, that's Olestra. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, 
<laughs> this has just become the dad hour. Uh, but there's those drugs that put you to sleep. They help you sleep in whatever. And those apparently aren't good because they put you to bad sleep and you don't get rest out of it. You kind of need to go into deep sleep and then go into REM sleep to actually repair your brain or remove brain plaques or whatever good sleep is doing for you. But the, when you're taking drugs that make you not dream and stuff, it doesn't give you that kind of sleep. It's a different kind of sleep. You're just like unconscious or whatever. And it's not, that's not good. You want to have good sleep. So it's, they are inducing that kind of sleep. They're and inducing good sleep. Bad they're sleep. inducing bad sleep. So they're you're not dreaming. And that's why they have such a firm answer. Okay. Well, okay. Well, so, but <laughs> the, if. the good sleep, bad sleep. I mean, good sleep is cause you're still alive. Right. Bad sleep is you're the equivalent of dead. Right. Like, I, like, like that was very comforting to me. The second time I did a procedure where they put me under and then I came back and I was like, what the fuck? What in the, what, why am I dressed like this? Oh, yeah, uh, they cut you open. They think, and then I, and like driving home, I'm like, can't wait to get a drink. Can't wait to get back. You're not to my supposed to drive life. yourself home after that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else is supposed to drive. That's you like know, the one driving. rule. Oh. I'm like in the Uber and I'm like, take me to the drawing room. And the guy's like, you're not supposed to drink after I'm like, <laughs> take me before my fuck, before this fades away. I want to combine it with everything on the top <laughs> shelf. Um, and part of it is because it's like, uh, there is, to me, I do feel like um, I feared death. 10 to 30% more before I had had these experiences where they go, we're going to do this thing. We got to work on your throat and we don't want you to sue us. So we're going to put you in a state where you're never going to sue us. Right. And the state where you're never going to sue anybody is kind of death. They figured out how to put you in a state that just makes you not exist. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you dream. It doesn't make anything that your fiance would say to you make you go like, yeah, but uh -huh. uh, like they, they don't want that during surgery. So you're, you're being put by corporate America into a state called death. <laughs> and then they're bringing you back out of death. So while that's not necessarily a good power for them to have, it is like... It is comforting for me when I think about it. I go like, yeah, oh, God, what if, what if God doesn't exist? I'm like, motherfucker, you know what happens if God doesn't exist. It's called, it's called everything that led up to that surgery minus all the shit that happened after. <laughs> That's it. That ain't so bad. Right. That's what I'm afraid of, though. That, that, to me, that is so bad. You know what I found? Well, it's, it's so bad in a philosophical well, sense. Well, you've done a lot. You've well, got a lot I, done. I just, I'm just like, it's not, it's not Vietnam. It's like, it's not right. like, well, it's, it's like whatever happens before you go into that state, it's like, ah, oh, Tommy, I can't feel my legs. No, it's all right. Remember the Bronx pizza? Oh, shit, put my intestines. Like, that's all life. That's life. That's not death. There's nothing to fear about death. Well, like there's, a, there's a story of a of like of a like a famous like old, I don't know if he's famous but like a hiker who he's wrote this famous. thing and, and he would uh, he would go on these giant like like mountain hiking trips and he would bring one long novel to read and every page he read he would tear the page off to lighten the weight of, of what, what what he had, you know like what he's carrying Whoa. as he goes along so he's reading his book and he's like why why have the rest of the pages behind you. That you're not going to read again. Like he just he would just tear the pages and throw them away as he as he hiked along. Because he's like the last shit I'm ever going to read. I don't give a shit. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like I'd rather carry a light book and like like everything before me is the first page of the book that I'm reading, and everything else has already happened. And did anyone? I mean, everyone right now is going like, what the? F how in the fuck are you littering at this <laughs> right <laughs> time? Yeah. Like like just because you're there and there's like no cops, you're just like fucking <laughs> like I. Yeah, I, I bring a bag of French fries. I do the same thing. I like throw a fucking McNugget wrapper. Oh, he, Lighten the load. He, he, his, uh, his paper is biodegradable. I just the, nope. the one one man's poet is another man's right. shithead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look. The first thing I thought too is like litter bug. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, 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 do you want like what? What if other people twenty years from now want to be the guy that's never been here before, and they're like, "What is this shit?" There's a hustler pages everywhere. There's a <laughs> pictorial about a, they a waitress the peeing in a guy's also, mouth. Why was his? Why? Why did he take uh, eat love prey? He like went, a fucking yeah, what like, is this? like bring what, something fucking heavy, skinny legs and all. Tim Robbins <laughs> just wishes he was Kurt Vonnegut. I don't know if I, Tom Robbins. Sorry, you, you know, you, you, you know, it scared me. Well, that didn't scare. It kind, of, like, kind of alarmed me after the fact when I had my vo uh, vocal surgery. It was I was under, I was up at like an hour and a half later. Everything was fine, everything was groovy. They told me I would need a wheelchair uh, so that like church could drive me home. And I had to be come out in a wheelchair. I was 
I, I stood up. I was fine. Like, you good to walk? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And um, I didn't realize that they had drawn, and with a sharpie, an X on the side of my neck. I'm like, what is that about? And they go, oh, that was just to make sure the doctors know what side to cut into. Right, because otherwise, they're so good at their job that they'll just <laughs> fuck right up. We because trust them to the, kill the, us and bring us back to life, but they don't know what sides they're gonna be are. Putting a, uh, they're going to be putting a camera and a laser beam down my throat, and they want to make sure that they're laser beaming the right side of my neck, but it was just a good old-fashioned X marks the spot yeah. on the outside. They goes, oh, oh, we're doing left side today? That's, that's, or, uh, that's, like, that, that was like... That, that's a little too analog for my fucking money. They should be more on the money. ball. I'll, I'll, I've said it before. I'll say it again. And the socket. Uh, doctors <laughs> are serial killers with support systems. Right. That's <laughs> it. They're privileged serial killers. I, I, I like, 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 like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer might have been a uh, uh, head, head chief of staff, uh, but he grew up in Milwaukee. God bless him. <laughs> he was just trying to make AI. <laughs> he was just uh, speaking. I of read which, the podcast. I read it. Uh, yeah. So the <laughs> I asked somebody, I was, I was in Milwaukee like four or five days ago, and I asked somebody, like, you guys have the most serial killers. They go, no, that's Washington. I'm like, they're proud of that. Ah, that's like <laughs> we're in Australia. are like, you guys have so many poison spiders. They're like, 30% of our spiders aren't poisonous. Like, no one's supposed to know that. <laughs> You're not supposed to have that reaction. All right. Anyways, uh, let's 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 get to our guest. Uh, we can talk to him about uh, all this and more. Um, I, I, I've 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 I, I, it's, it's a complicated relationship because I'm like I'm like in this new age of like everyone's I, I can touch people I can I can hurt them I can judge them I can like it's a, I can be a fan I can like whatever I don't know and I'm into true crime podcasts. We we flew the red-handed ladies out from 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 London and we're we, it, we, it was a, a blessing. And, and we've had a good time, and then I'm like, like in the, I don't know, I talk about the shit I listen to on podcasts, and I'm like, oh, I've been talking about this guy Asperger Detective, and then I'm like, you heard me go through in this podcast where I'm like, well, I probably shouldn't call him that. That's uh, cr that seems like bullying, because uh, if you like like the guy, in the meantime, we've become fans and all this stuff, and like this. Anyways, he's here, uh, um, and he's amazing. Please welcome uh, Ryan Krause from. Uh, <laughs> From Cold Case Mystery Murders. <laughs> I didn't even get that right. Cold Case Mystery Files? Cold Case Murder Mysteries. Uh, so it's Cold Case Mystery... Cold Case Murder Mysteries. Murder Mysteries. Cold Case... Hello, Ryan. How you doing, man? All right. I How definitely... Doing, man? Nobody expected you to look like Michael Chiklis. That's not... <laughs> And that's the biggest compliment it's, in the world. I told you last night we had dinner, and I'm like, like Michael Chiklis is everyone's catch-all for you shave your head and work out. Like I, I, I would have said he looks more like like that one judge that you really want to impress on a cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. I, 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 wait, wait, that's a, that's it's rude I to think, bring you I out. I think your flavor profile's here, but you got to use a little more salt in this, man. You got to. Anyway, sorry. How are you? How was your trip? Thank you for driving oh, out oh, here. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, I'm great. Yeah. Yeah. No you you drove here from Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. You're yeah, gonna you're gonna have to eat that mic. We have to tell everyone. It's, yeah. It's the worst. Like this. I'm so close. You're gonna be this close. Okay. Otherwise, people will be like, I hated him. He In sounded, my mouth. I hate. Yeah, no more far less. away guests. Why was that guy so far away? <laughs> And we're like, he wasn't far so away. So you're a Phoenix native or resident? Uh, no, I just moved away from LA actually about six months ago, unfortunately. But so you fled LA and you've moved <clears throat> to Arizona? Uh, yeah, I was like, I had a corporate job and the podcast, and I could only really keep one, so I had to let something go. And I was in Santa Monica, so I let go of the corporate job, and yeah, I just had to. Well done. Gotta do my thing. <laughs> I do love I love those stories like when you get into true crime podcasts you're like invested in people that have a certain amount of Patreon subscribers and then hopefully usually there's like a moment where they're like guys if if enough of you help me I can actually stop delivering pizza or whatever and you kind of like you experience this sort of like you get to watch a million Stan Lees like create a million Spider-Mans kind of but it's like it's a healthy in a in a healthy level uh, so I and I heard that episode where you're like you're telling your origin story of working in cubicles and stuff, and it was, it was pretty pretty deep and electric. It was really I, I, it was more than I expected. Yeah, I don't even know if I remember that. episode. There's an yeah. underlying thing to you. We should talk about this later though, because we should uh, like wait, where you 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 kind of oh, goddamn <laughs> it, or I mean great. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> 
I just don't understand why it can't happen earlier. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Because I didn't text him yet. Oh, you texted him. I had to. So he keeps dropping the ball. He keeps dropping the ball. Day before your Steve? surgery and you're in charge of ice? Well, I got to be in charge of ice going forward. It's going to be a big part of my life for a couple weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just true. Um, anyways, so let's talk, let's talk. Can we talk about your origin story? Like you going from working stiff to true crime podcaster. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Which part do we want to talk about? I don't know. Like, <laughs> give give us the rough edges. You don't have to. I heard an episode where you talk about the. There was like a. There was like a whole thing. You don't have to talk. Was about that the that. Columbine episode, or was the, it the one before it? Uh, I think that was a free episode. Yeah, could have been. But Sorry. but but just give us the. I don't know. Like you. Let's see, you. you like, why why are you interested in true crime? Why did you start a true crime podcast? That kind of thing. Oh, you like, know, I'm not I, a bad think, interviewer. Just help me I out. I mean, the true crime thing started way back in the day. I mean, my mom was watching Unsolved Mysteries all the time. I don't know if anybody's a fan of Unsolved Mysteries, <laughs> but like constantly. So I was always just in the house, and I would hear about true crime and these unsolved things, and I just started becoming interested in that. And I think for me, it was like, oh, how do these people's brains work? Why do these people kill? Be it sociopaths, like, like criminals. Yeah, I mean, it was. I wanted to know about everybody's brain. It, why is this person a psychopath or a sociopath? And do you just, think? What do you think is isolating that? Like, what is it? Fear? Like, like, like is it fascination? When we watch, because I think it's linked to why we watch movies about mafia people, werewolves. Like, like we we have this fascination. Oh, these people are sociopaths. <laughs> is it is it like I'm scared? Werewolves I'm... just get bit. <laughs> is it is it i'm scared i'm like them or is it i'm so scared of them i need to understand them to like oh, them I, I think it's both of those things i mean i think to a certain extent all of us have some type of sociopathic tendencies and we notice that in our behavior and sometimes we're ashamed of it we try to get away from it but um you know i think there is some darkness in all of us um whether it ever comes out or not and for me, that was the fascination. It was just, you know, am I like this? Who is like this? Why are they like this? Why are they just, more like this than me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, why just, is this person considering themselves <laughs> like a candidate for driving their children into a river and jumping out of the car and blaming it on a random minority? Yeah. Like, why did they just think that was okay to do? Which of them got away with it? Why did they get away with it? What did they do when they were in police custody? Like it extends to all of yeah, them. Yeah, it extends oh, wait, to wait, all wait, of that. When you watch the TV shows, like I, I'm, you know, I watch the Forensic Files and the uh, the Datelines and stuff like that, and uh, the the cops frequently go, yeah, you know, they, they always think they're smarter than us. You know, they, this guy thought he knew all the angles. But like, I wonder how many people that are really smart actually do know all the yeah, angles and, and get away with it. It's like they kind of are smarter than you, a lot of them, because you guys do it every day. And it's, it's, we were talking about this at dinner last night. How like, 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 I don't know what the percentage is, but the, I think the difficult thing for cops, who I am, I am my fan of true crime is like making me a big fan of homicide detectives. Cause Jesus Christ, if you think working at Kinko's is hard, like it's like, 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 like this, this like idea that they have to work with these people and they have to get confessions out of them. And then half of the time they, if they succe successfully get a confession, it's like you asshole, he's not guilty. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, but I only did what I <laughs> like. So the, most of the time they're lying. Um, and, uh, but they, they, uh, like it's like a lot of times like you you watch like forensic files and uh, they, 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 the cops will talk about their techniques and they'll go they'll they'll leverage the fact that the average person given the, an average person that commits a murder like that they'll they'll be leveraged by the idea that the cop wants to be their friend for instance oh yeah definitely that they'll be like oh sure. don't you, you seem like a smart guy. And the person will respond, and they'll do the thing, like, I don't think you want to be dishonest. Like, I think you want to do right by the mother of the victim and stuff. And it's like that, that impulse to, like, not let the cop down. Yeah, they're seeking validation, and the cops know that. Yeah. And they tend to just feed right into that. And the cops and whatever like, they see that is, Whatever they see is lacking within that person, whatever the desperation is that caused them to commit the crimes, that's generally what they go after. That's just what an abuser does. 
uh, is notice notice what the person what what pushes the person's buttons. right. It tries yeah. to feed into that to manipulate them. But you're kind exactly. of an abuser abuser when you're right. when you when you suspect that uh, a person is yeah. And it's like that's the thing is like I don't know what I haven't heard cops talk a lot about on these true crime shows. The ones that I love because they have cops involved. Like they don't. It's like there aren't any rules when you're dealing with sociopaths. I like your show because you talk a lot about your you talk about sociopaths in what seems to me to be the right way because it's like I don't want to praise them. I don't think they're better than us. At the same time, I don't think I don't think we should pretend that they're like they don't exist. But yeah. like I like that you're kind of like you're, you're always like this guy's a fucking idiot. That's the thing is he thinks he can just he's such a sociopath. He's going to call 911 and just make up a murder story. And here's the thing. You can't do that. That's really hard for people that make them up for a living to do. It's so much anything on television. It doesn't work. Like, it's a, like and, the, and the people that are great at that, the people that are great at making the perfect fake 911 call or whatever, they end up being so proud of themselves that they can't wait to tell everybody that they hang out with, man, I fucking t- I called 911. Like they, 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 it they, is true, yeah. They, 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 they're so proud of themselves about it. What is a? Can you tell me the difference between a sociopath and a psychopath? Um, you know that I've actually made up my own rules about that because oh, I'm crazy. I'd love to hear them. Yeah, I'll no, go but, um, as far as a sociopath goes, uh, well, psychopath. First of all, a psychopath we think of as a puppet master. So they're generally people who use their resources as a puppet master over something or somebody else in that manner. So um, if you think of like there were the case of Michelle Carter. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. Um, she was the one who had the boyfriend who committed suicide at her urging. She sent him hundreds of texts oh, okay. saying, kill yourself now, do it now, do it now, uh, because she had that emotional power over him. Right. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, somebody like that, another classic psychopath. He's a guy who um, was offering jobs that paid much more than anybody right. else would pay for labor, so he was able to get young men to do things they wouldn't normally do, and they took a lot of risks, and they would stick around his home, because if they didn't, they couldn't make that money, right. and so he was more of a puppet master like that. But with the sociopath, uh, I generally think of them more as leeches. And so what they're doing is they're manipulating you for your resources rather than using theirs to control you. So they're generally lazier. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're they, considered fringe characters. Sociopaths so. like settle. Sometimes they're, they take the, the, the spotlight because of where they landed. It's like, who would have expected a sociopath to become CEO of this company? And then they're, it's like, whoa, uh, this sociopath is the star of this show, but it's only really because of the situation they landed in, yeah. combined with the fact that a sociopath is like a jellyfish. They're like, yeah. I'll do whatever I can to survive. I have no fucking empathy. And a psychopath has a little bit of an itch. It's like, yeah. I'm playing Grand Theft Auto, and it's pretty boring. Like, what do I got to do to make this interesting? They like they want they have yeah. a little yeah, are, bit are, of. Are a... there psychopaths that actually just like like gamblers like, will take terrible risks to make stupid bets because they get a kick out of the action? What they call it right. Are, are there psychopathic murderers and criminals? I mean, I'm sure there are that do it simply for that kind of uh, adrenaline thing, or um... or, or, or is, it, is, it, is it the simple idea that they feel that they're allowed to because they're. They have that status. Yeah, I mean, the psychopath is generally just known for having no regard for anybody else. And so that's why they're sometimes good corporate CEOs um, and things of that nature. So, yeah. (laughs) I read that they're more comfortable drifting, that a psychopath is like a coconut. They're like, they contain everything they need. Like, a psychopath could go years just wandering around. And a sociopath actually gets anxious about like I don't know I feel like a, I don't even have a family like like even though they don't actually empathize with but they they feel anxiety about uprooting and wandering and a yeah. psychopath is like actually the open road's the only place to be. <laughs> That's one thing that I read. Are there other classifications beyond psychopath and sociopath for the people that you? Like profile on your show? Uh, yeah, I mean there are there are plenty of subcategories and things of that nature, but I mean those those are generally the two major classifications. What, what kind of if if you murder someone <laughs> for any reason other than food or them trying to make you food, you might be a red. <laughs> if I mean if you murder someone, are you automatically a sociopath? Can you be like retro diagnosed as a sociopath? 
Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, you could just be somebody who flipped out at any moment and killed someone. What it is could be the... an anger issue. Uh, for sociopaths, generally what I believe they've been created to do, I believe that their brains have been created specifically to not allow them to make adjustments in their narrative as far as what they do on a daily basis. So a lot of detectives will tell you that when you're dealing with a sociopath, um, generally what happens is they have a very rigid logic. And so they follow that logic and they don't veer from it at all. The detectives. What, yeah, well, no, the, the sociopath. That's, I so knew that. Is, we, <laughs> by not veering from the logic, they will continue to make mistakes again and again and again up until... Because they've, they've written a story in their mind that can't be uh, like deviated from. Yeah, and the, it, there's a lot of denial involved. And the reason the denial is involved is because, like you're saying, they can't deviate from the original plan. And so they will just follow through even if the logic doesn't make sense. And the idea is the brain has been developed like that specifically to put them in prison. But in the process, we're creating a lot of technology related to detecting light and... Right, like they, they've been placed nature. by God as like debugging equipment. Oh, absolutely, that yeah. That they, their job is to go through the highway map and constantly try to turn right. Yes, And if exactly. they're able to, it either represents a place where you need an on-ramp, as in Lizzie Borden, possibly. Yeah, like, right. you did a Lizzie Borden episode where your take on it was very, you're like, I, I mean, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but my... my, my brutish summation of your take on Lizzie Borden was basically like, this is a woman who, if she was being denied the things that she felt she deserved in, in like 40 years difference, like there wouldn't be as much question about what she was entitled to. Exactly. This was a woman who was being told at her place in time that there's no, you're in a cell socially, like, oh, you're a spinster. You're, you either need to marry a man and submit to his will, or you need to do what your father says. And she was like, psych. I have a hack for that. No yeah. pun intended. Yeah. I, I have, I have, I have, I have thirty. Which is short for hatch for that. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, but, but, and, and I mean, did, did I, did I paraphrase you wrong? No, I mean, that, no, that's that, that sort of I mean, your that's, take. That's a great example of a is the, not that these well. people are yeah. gods or monsters or heroes or villains, but that sometimes their functionality is a scrubbing bubble. That they're yeah. like going like, hey, there's a fucking. <laughs> like there's railings here that like a woman isn't allowed to do anything except chop a motherfucker. <laughs> like and and that we do we do that like 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 we we do that with like that's that's why our history is like such a roller coaster of like criminals that become like exonerated things like sometimes the sociopaths are like it's like oh they're not a role model however if it weren't for them blibbity blue blue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a the thing that makes a sociopath special is that, like, for instance, is it, he's writing it down. Right, how it's, do you spell blibbity blue poop? B L I B B E D. Two P's. Two P's. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'm sorry. I'm a bad interviewer, and I'm sorry for no, everything. I, <laughs> but Lizzie Borden. I don't even was, remember what I was going to say. She was a she was like what 19 something like early in the past and she was in a big house and she killed her dad to get the house and she got away with it more or less is the theory. Yeah, she, did yeah, she killed her mom it. too. Because, uh, right, because, because like she just was like, ah, I was painting and I got these clothes red with paint and now I threw them out and it's not suspicious back then. Yeah. And so like she was just exploiting the legal system or, or the system. Yeah, yeah, she just totally exploited the legal system. It's something that happens on a daily basis now. And because of incidents like that, and we were able to create better forensics, we now under, have a better understanding of that. So that's really the purpose of the sociopath, is to advance that technology over and over and over. So their faulty logic ensures when they want something and they can't get it, they'll engage criminality, because there's just no other way to get it. So if you're Lizzie Borden, you're stuck in this house, you don't get your father's money, he's healthy and he's not going to die for a long time, um, you basically just do whatever you have to do to make sure he's dead without even worrying about the logic. And that's generally how the sociopath works. So you, you have this thing that you do that other podcasters don't do, where you... I have a lot of those. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have... You, you, you do it fully nude. <laughs> yes, yes. Which is, I, I which actually is requested nice, but... to do this show nude, and Dan was like, I don't know. Right, now we can't. I don't know. Um, but you do, you kind of pick, I'm kind of curious about your process, but you can tell me, no, that jumps the shark. I can't tell you exactly how I do it, but I'm curious about how you, like, you pick a case because part of your gimmick is you pretty much always go lateral. I mean, you, 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 the 
for me as a consumer, the joy of true crime is that it's like, these are all different personalities, but the canon is all the same because it's true crime. Everyone's going to do John Benet Ramsey, and I want them to. I, I and it, it because I want the same way that Shakespeare was just adapting. Whatever, I, Harmon, shut up and just get to your point. I my my point is that like your your unique gimmick is that you you actually do kind of investigate these things. You pick cases that have. Uh, questionable resolutions, and you you very proudly put a crown on your head and go like, "Look, here's the thing. I don't need any more information than I have." And a lot of people talk about they wish this autopsy photo came back, but guess what? You don't fucking need it. All you need all you need to solve this case is to think about one thing: evolution. And <laughs> and you and it's it's either the like Cody and my fiance and I are like always go like. We go, he goes, you, you always like, te you go like, it's going to be one thing. It's, it's either going to be evolution, resources, or redirection of light. And, <laughs> and I'm not mocking you because it is, you go, you commit to that like a crazy kind of Columbo, like, like, like detective, yeah. like you're yeah, good sure. at it. You do it well. What is redirection I, of light? Oh, I, I yes. Mean, it, Please explain I, it, this. It, it, it is. This is great. Well, we got we got some uh, some uh, light redirection. Some, some ROL fans, fans out here. Yeah. This is this is this is one of your big things. And for those who aren't indoctrinated, it's like like I mean, you're constantly talking about redirection of light. Yeah, I mean, redirection of light can that. Um, it's actually, I mean, it's just essentially just blocking the truth in some way. Um, it can be thought of in many ways, but I think one of the ways that I explained it recently, I covered the Justin Ross Harris case, if everybody's familiar with that. Um, it was a hot car death with his young son, and he's in prison for it now. Is that like, the guy that left his kid in the car and then went to uh, yeah, he Burger he, King or Yeah, whatever? he just, he left his kid in the car when he went to work instead of taking the kid to daycare, and it was in Atlanta in June. And, and he claimed that uh, he... His case was, I didn't know, I, I'm hearing impaired, so I, I forgot my kid was in the car. I, I, yeah, I took him he, to work, I went to work, and then we went to lunch, and then my kid got cooked in a car. Yeah, so he, he, had, claimed, he had claimed that for seven hours he didn't think of his son, and you could see by the way that he had parked his vehicle and the movements that he made coming in and out of the building, that he was intentionally avoiding seeing him certain make, things and was positioning his vehicle in certain ways, and the one of the, like I said, the sociopath is unable to see. When, once he reaches the stage of denial, he's unable to see that he's not making adaptations to his plan. And so one of the uh, instances of redirected light that I talked about was that he pulls the vehicle into the parking space by backing in because he wants to be able to get out and not have to look into the back of the vehicle. So if he pulls in forward, he has to get out and walk past the door where his son is in the car seat and he would see him. So he intentionally backs in. But by backing in, what happens is he creates a situation where he would have seen the kid in the back seat through the side. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't quite follow that. Do. So like if if he parked in normally, he would have to are you saying he has to look over the back seat to back out of the space and he would see so the kid in the back seat? Let's say the, the Where kid, is the kid sitting? Front or back kid, seat? The kid's in a car seat in the back. Okay. So let's say he, he would normally pull in face first. Right. And so every other vehicle in the parking lot is like that, except for his. His is backed in. Because he doesn't want to walk past yeah. the back seat. So when he, he wants to walk forward. If he were to pull ah. in forward, he has to get out and walk past the back seat and he'll and see, see the car seat. Right. So he avoids doing that. But what he can't see as a sociopath is that he's actually redirecting that light. Right. And so what that means is that by parking the vehicle and backing it in, what he's doing is he's creating a situation where he has to use the rear view and also the side mirror in order to back into the spot. And while doing that, yeah. he would very clearly see his son. He would have used more, fact, more light to see the reflection of his son in the back seat of the car. So it, in fact, hours later, that's how he actually says he sees his son. He says, I was changing a lane. I looked in the mirror and I saw him in the back. But he would have seen that yes. had, when he parked the vehicle. He was not able to understand that, though. Because <laughs> you he, got, sometimes you have flare-ups like, uh, like that. I, I remember you saying about that guy. You're like, but this guy, and he says this, but here's the thing. I'm about to squash his fucking life like a grape. <laughs> I, like, like you, you, you have you have little not his life, but you probably said like his logic or something. Like you, I love that about you that you're like, you you have nerd Hulk outs. Like you're, and th and then also you're like you know, and I know I know I know half of you think I'm full of fucking shit, but here's the thing, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, do you, so, so do you take and I, I, I now I, I can't wait to listen to the show. I'm it's sorry. Great. I'm sorry so that good. I'm late to the game on this, but uh, like, do you take evidence that was already there and go? I pick that evidence for for me to go. That's the thing. Or do you put it all together and go? I'm going to make my own extrapolation out of that and and say here's what I think that no detective had already landed on. Yeah, I mean, I generally try to extract whatever the human brain is doing. So if I look into the psychology, then I'll start uh, analyzing the philosophy of it and the sociology as well and just go just go off on a rant. Right, uh, so the car thing is like he's creating plausible deniability almost, but creating plausible deniability is someone a, something a guilty person does yeah. so that they can then claim they're getting away with it. So that right. gets back to the redirection of light. He's creating this incident where he could pretend to, to be telling the truth, yeah. but he's actually engineering a... Uh, a a dishonest situation, and that has evidence that looks like a dishonest situation being created. It, it takes energy to, right. like, it, 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 it almost thought, think like it's like psychology. when you were talking about, oh, he uh, he would have looked in his rear view mirror and all that stuff. Actually, that's that pales in comparison to the fact that, like, if if he pulled in head first to his parking spot every day, and then that day backed in, boom, you're done. Redirection of light, right? Because he's doing something specific that day and he's doing it because to hide the truth. because what's on his mind is I don't want anyone to perceive me as having having seen my baby. I cooking. think people that back in for no reason are fucking weird just to start <laughs> with. Oh, uh, I do Why that. You fucking bark I do that because at the end of the day I I want to go home. <laughs> my mom, I, I, at the beginning the of the day I have you? more energy. I'm like <laughs> whack, whack, whack. And then, and then I want to... I so to, start, uh, to the start the day, you've got so much energy. Oh, man, I can't wait to do a fucking complicated maneuver. Yeah, because I want to pay it my forward thing. to my grumpy self at the end of the day. It's like me saying, Grumpy Dan, get out of here. It's 5 o'clock. Get out of here. Beat traffic. Yeah, well, so like, thank that, you. Thank you. Ryan, then, does that make him psychopath or sociopath? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with sociopath. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely because I'm lazy. Definitely. I think that is sociopathic. Yeah. No, no, I yeah. love well, your Instagram workouts. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, this is a way to. Um, uh, I, I, I want to talk about your like, but your uh, the. Well, I do want to say this redirection of light thing, or like the thing that you do that's so specific. I want to, I want to insert there because I, I have said on this podcast, even to other true crime people, I'm like. You know the true crime story that really bums me out, that really freaks me out, keeps me up at night, was this uh, Kanika Powell. Is it Kamika or Kanika? Kanika. It was the young lady who the guy came to her door, he pretended he was a UPS guy and all this stuff, and there was like two guys and all this stuff, and she was like, like, and then she ends up getting shot, and there's no robbery and all this stuff. It was just so disturbing to me because it felt, it was, it, 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 it just filled me with anxiety. I'm like, why isn't there a task force? What is going on? And he did an episode on it, and it was like, and it, as an example of what you, how what you do can kind of actually be beneficial. You have the same information that anyone else has, but you're tracing it through and going, what do the guy or guys that are doing this shit to her have in common? They're idiots. I mean, they're bad at their job. Like, yeah, like they're they they're dumb. They're children. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to get into her apartment, and they're doing a terrible job at it. They're failing every step of the way. And then following that track, that 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 explains her death in the end. Because what happens to this poor uh, young lady is she comes back. She's in her lobby of her own hotel place, and and then. All we know is that some guy shoots her and runs away. It, but the way that you break it down is like, yeah, no, the same idiot children that were so desperate to have her in her apartment, they were the, that desperation planted them like children, idiot children, where she lived, waited for her to come back, did what idiot children would do. She reacted the way an adult would. They reacted the way a child would because she wasn't going to go in a fucking apartment with a fucking child with yeah. a gun that's been trying to get. She's like, no, fuck you. I'm a military trained like uh, adult. And they this person shot her and ran like a child. And that is why it, it it's like, oh, there was no her wallet wasn't taken and all this stuff, which is the stuff that panicked me because I was like, this is a professional hit. Like, like, how are we ignoring this? Like, we need the, 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 like she the, like the government killed her. 
and and instead you're like, no, this is all explained, and the guy that did it was active in that area, and then stopped being active. He's in prison right now. He did this kind of thing. He probably did that. He wouldn't confess to it because that would add to his time, and it's all good. I, I it's like you, you your your unique way of looking at things like actually had like a it was like you solved the case for me. You made me sleep at night. Do you night. think, Ryan, that uh, not, not having listened to the show, uh, and I will, I promise, I, like uh, that what I you, you what you're good at, like what, what what makes your show good? Do you think that you might be valuable as a resource to law enforcement? I think like, he should be an actual detective. You answer it. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I've, <laughs> I've actually never really given any thought to that. Um, I, I, have. I have had people approach me and say and say, "Hey, did you ever think that you could, you know, contribute to law enforcement?" Um, I'm not so sure that a lot of what I do is very grounded, but I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, mean, I, I wouldn't I, say yeah, that you would be a great... You can't bring it in a courtroom. You right? wouldn't be, yeah, it wouldn't hold up in, in, a, in a courtroom necessarily. But then again, like, profilers and people that, like, you might be the person that they go to and just go, like, like Ryan, what do you think about this guy? He, goes, he sounds like, uh, you know, he sounds like a classic uh, number 17. Yeah, I definitely think I'll be beneficial in that way, for sure. Yeah, so yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. Do you think that, because, so, it, it, it's like you would consider yourself, like, the equivalent of, like, a psychic in the sense that if it works, it works. A psychic. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Well, there's like there's crime sh shows about a guy that's who's like podcast. his eyebrows twitching. You know what that means? He's right. thinking about his mom, and it's like that's not going to hold up in court. Right. But in the TV show, it works fucking great because that makes the guy confess, and then that does work. In well, court. if it helps you knock on the right door, right, and then that guy tries to crawl out the window, you got him. Yeah. It's like, oh, how'd you how'd you knock on my door? A profiler told us. What the fuck's a profiler? Yeah, that shit doesn't hold up in court. But like and sometimes that's a psychic. Like you hear law enforcement sometimes say uh, they have this like weird relationship with psychics that call in they because they, yeah. they're kind of going, and I've heard you say this on your podcast where what I'm hearing you say is something that uh Agent Dale Cooper on Twin Peaks would say, which is uh if if the, if to make the, you sound more legitimate, by the way. <laughs> if the linear path isn't working, figure out any other way to look at this. And so sometimes you'll go, so I'm looking at this whole thing from the perspective of John Hughes movies. And it's like, well, wait, that's not... But then you're like, now looking at that from that perspective, you discover different details or you notice different connections and then you draw different conclusions, which more often than not, Solve the crime. You, you know, it's a good like, podcast. Yeah. Like, if it's, speaking of movies, like, like it's like an old, like, like an old western. Like, you'd be a great like country judge. Like, <laughs> hell, I, I know the law <laughs> says this and the law says that, but no, you're he's this a guy's Pinkerton. He's a Pinkerton. This guy's clearly <laughs> from. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Sixteen Candles, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, but. Like, do you, like, just talk about that for a second. Because you've addressed that a couple times in your podcast. Like, I've, it's sort of like, it's, you, you're a hero to me because you kind of, like, uh, every once in a while, I'm like, wait, this guy believes in voodoo. And then you're, <laughs> and then the other sentence, you're like, oh, no, you're, like, such a, you're such a, like, logician. Uh, and you're you're bridging some gap there, where you believe that it's all about perspective or something. Yeah, I mean, I think there, there's part of my show that I, I guess I should probably clarify. Um, I've always been very polarizing, and obviously you know that a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of people hate my show, so um, it's always been all it's always been about logic and about trolling people as well, <laughs> because I have a lot of hate listeners, and so do you actively troll people? Um, I think my show is an active troll. I think a five-hour episode do it on is purpose, pretty much. Though. You don't. No, no. I mean, you're not like, like oh, I I'm only doing this because my haters are gonna hate it. No, no, absolutely not. No, I mean just the general nature of the show and how right. I put it what, together. What, what is the, the average? Things that, the, the things that I, like when I, if I'm trolling the people who hate the show, that's usually to the benefit of the people who like it. Yeah. yeah. What is your average troll beefing about with your show? That, that it's too not logic based or? Oh, it, it's like it's anything from the production to the, oh. <laughs> the audacity of my conclusions to. The way, my voice to the way I present <laughs> things to the cadence, but that, but that's great because you're everything. you're doing basically more of you're you're doing an opinion piece like you're you're putting you're lending your own you know like yeah like it, subjective ideas onto things and like 
the people that like edit like uh, opinion editorial pages in newspapers, they love the hate mail. That means people are reading, and that means yes. like, that, we, that we're we're creating a conversation. So that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely part of what I do. Um, I, you know, a lot of true crime shows you listen to, um, regardless of whether they're good or bad. You know, there's there's kind of a thing where people are not quite committing to certain conclusion in a case for whatever reason. I mean, it might not be what the show is about. But um, I tend to just be audacious and go for it and just say what I think. I think it's an interesting intersection between true crime and podcasting is that the part of you that wants to podcast is the part of you that wants somebody out there to like you. I, otherwise, why podcast it? But the part of you that likes true crime is the part of you that is, wants to acknowledge that life is disgusting and toxic yeah, and predatory. Definitely. And so it's tough. I've, I've talked to the red-handed uh, gals about this, how it's like I like them because they're... <laughs> They don't. They don't constantly pause, and I understand the constant pauses with true crime podcasters, where they're like, "By the way, this is about the victim and not about the." Oh, no one wants to hear about what Jack the Ripper did. He's not a hero or anything. But anyways, this episode's called Jack the Ripper, and it, it, it's really about the victims. And it, it's like, yeah, but, uh, it's, uh, um, <laughs> the. I, I like that you're, I mean, we need people that are like, <laughs> that you're, you clearly like hear the haters and then you're like, all right, that's expected, but here's the thing. I'm a genius. <laughs> like, I don't, <laughs> of course you'd hate that. I'm going to blow your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it ever a guest or is it just you just straight to Mike? Well, no uh, it's just me. I mean, right. <laughs> it would be yeah. funny to hear a guest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I, it can I be for the first guest? I. Because because I would be like oh shit the air conditioner went on again I I I, I, I sit there with Cody I'm like oh god damn it the air conditioner went on who wants to see Dan on the show I mean oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's his audience <laughs> don't let me ruin your show though yes. like I don't said the sociopath I, you're <laughs> fucking so, you're, you're like a, you're like an ooze trying to yeah. get in and destroy his show I don't want I don't want to ruin things I debated on the show is like I don't because I really that's how much affection I have for your show oh, and, and, you. and there for you is like we talked about that I was yeah. like I don't want to keep doing this thing like I don't want to keep jabbing my ruler into primordial ooze I love true crime podcasting because it's punk rock I, I think it's fucked up that like I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of like Laying in bed with Cody, and then the neck, and, and it's like, oh, in, in other news, uh, I guess I'm going on Harmontown, and I'm kind of like, am I fucking up? Am I fucking up? Or am I signal boosting? I want a signal boost. I don't want to fuck up. I, don't, I, you're I, not here for me. So let's talk about you. Okay, can, can, can I ask a question? Because I'm, I'm fascinated about, like, we. We talked briefly that you left corporate. Well, can, can we ask what the corporate gig was? What were you doing before? He um, founded Tesla. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, I was an executive assistant uh, to the CIO of my company. Yeah, That's all I was doing. I just uh, I needed a corporate job that had a decent paycheck. And What, what kind of uh, like job was it? Like, what, like tech or something like that? Oh, yeah. It was in an IT department for a uh, real uh, commercial real estate company. And then you started podcasting about true crime. Was it your first, first podcast? Or was it your first yeah, foray? Yeah, no. I mean, I've just been writing for a long time. And... It wasn't really paying off as well as I had liked, and I just figured I just needed a way to distribute my work so that I could get it in front of a lot of people, and podcasting was just the natural way to go. I mean, it, there are other factors involved. And it went so well that you could say goodbye to your Santa Monica West Side corporate job that paid probably pretty well, and then you can yeah. just go, fuck it, I'm leaving to Arizona, and I'm just going to make people on the internet mad about murders. Yeah, pretty much. That's... <laughs> That's the way it went. Yeah, I mean, I was. So just, that, that, you really just followed your own weird joy on that one, and just said, "Like, this is what I want to do." Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, I just worked nonstop, and it was like I got to a point where I was exhausted, and I was like, it has to be one thing or the other, and I wanted it to be the creative side. So that's so cool. That. That's that's just yeah. inspirationally awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's off to that. I mean, and yeah, and like everyone listening to that, like that's like. Like just do do the thing that you right. that you're. That's the bright side of the shitty about. dehumanizing internet is that it should be providing. Yeah, like I, that's what I love about it. As I said to uh, what's his fuck on the last uh, episode. <laughs> what's his fuck? Doctor, what's his? Oh, fuck? the uh, what's his guy? Overheard L.A. I'm like I love I love that like the internet like for all of its stories about how it destroys people with its fucking acidic dehumanization. It's also like, yeah, but before it existed, you couldn't just go, ah, tell me one more time to reload this paper tray, you piece of shit. I'm going to go home, grab a Yeti mic from Best Buy. That's what mic I have, too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. 
I can't figure out how to make those things work. They're a lot better than these ones. I mean, <laughs> they're not better, but they have a. You could talk a lot farther. But away. The, you can just like, and it's not about like, it's oh, you're either I've, Mozart I've done, or you don't it. know how to play piano. The, yeah. I don't like. I like the death of that hierarchy and the birth of that circular system where it's like. Actually, you don't know who, like, maybe the 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 reason I was born is because I'm neither, like, I, I, I'm just me. I love that, that people go like, yeah, she's just her. And then they, like, that, that, then, we, then we praise these stories or go, she was just her. No, she's a billionaire. And then we ruin that person. But I like the, like, that idea of, like, that ever-widening marketplace where it's like, you can just be you. And and then we you know well you too we all need someone while we're just being us to uh, I don't know drill the oil and but stuff. There is and, but we'll like, go out to other countries for like that. When, when podcasting first came around. Like I was you know I'm the old fuddy daddy. It's like what's a what's a blog? It's a combination of two words. It's stupid. And what's a podcast? That's dumb. And uh, and of course I've been doing a podcast for a thousand years. And but like there is there is kind of a little art movement to it where people just like. That, that there's just there's little pockets of humanity. It could be anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be in New York or you know Hollywood. And you just sit down and just talk about stuff, and people fall in love with it. And that's 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 closer to like like '60s and '70s punk rock New York. Like like people just going. I'm I'm not a great guitar player. I just know I want to go into these shitty little clubs and just scream into a microphone. Now I I don't want to be this guy. Mm. But if mm. you did, it would go a little something. Like said this. the guy who didn't want to be that guy <laughs> never <laughs> on steroids <laughs> <laughs> um but we should i really want to here's what i want to do Uh-oh. i want to send ryan out of the room stage a murder okay <laughs> why stage it well not stage, stage a murder it? but like <laughs> but like have ha- like have a truth that we know and that you don't know have you come back and just like I don't know, kind of have you examine it. Right. It's not to test you. It's just to like. This sounds totally okay, how about legit. This? Yeah. How about this? I'll I'll it's take I'll take we... Ryan into the green room. We'll cover our ears. Right. Uh, and then have like Levy or somebody come get us. But I'll be like your. Wait, but you. Oh, you you, you, want, you want me in on the job? Yeah, have someone else cover his ears. We, oh, we I, have I, people I, for that. I, we did I, build I, that. I, I was saying, I, I was, in, in, in my mind, I would be like the shitty local detective right. who brought in the the, the fancy uh, podcast profiler. Okay, so, you're, so I, you're okay. I, yeah, all right, I'm using just my regular cop training, but he's got the superpower. All right, but then what are Spencer and I left doing? Like one of us murders the other, and oh, that'd I, be great. I, I, I just want to figure out like. Well, uh, what we can, we that's have, the oh. hardest part is find. Like, well, but how we don't even need. Just, crime. We, we, all we need to do is decide on something conversationally. And decide then, on what? Like, oh, like we decide like um, uh, what w- what happened, and then we decide who did it. That's all then, very difficult. It I is mean, hard. It's yeah. Hard. Okay, we could do it though. But we can do it. But then well, once we, the once we know help. the truth, then definitively we'll be lying. Well, how about, is anybody in our audience? Uh, uh, has anyone actually committed a murder that has not I been do it. Yeah. yeah. Please that could tell be me. Good. Who is it? Nobody. Wait, wait. We can figure this out. We can figure this out. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, uh, using someone from the audience is a good idea. I like that start. But, like, we can't murder people. Well, let's murder. not rule that out just yet. I don't want them we to murder We need all us. options yes. on the table. But, like, <laughs> eh, fuck. You I can't don't know. murder you don't, the you don't have any suggestions. We don't know that. Yeah. Like, how does redirection of light work backwards where you could be well, like, what, you what know, about this? what would make you... What about this? Does anybody... Because... When you when you watch these uh, you know these murder shows and or listen to the uh, true crime podcast kind of things, do you ever kind of fantasize like I think I have the perfect crime or if I wanted to like do somebody this is how I think I would get away with it? If any, does anybody have one No? Cause like because I've got like five. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's you know, if you have a good one, you never want to share it out loud, especially on a recording. Right. <laughs> that's like rule number one of my plan. Yeah, but this would be a great way. This would be a great way to expiate that and go, like, I could never do that now because right. I've said it on, I feel on like, one of I the world's like, most famous podcasts. I feel like basically what we could do is an improvement on our 911 call thing. Okay. But the thing that we did wrong last time is the ladies were in the room, and then we pretend, like, like, if we send you guys out of the room, mm-hmm. and then Spencer and I, uh, we decide on a scenario, and then we, we bring you guys back in and we make our 911 calls based on what we know is the truth. Yeah, yeah, I, I think like I'm that. close there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. 
Do you want to actually Jeff say... Jeff just wants to leave. No, no. <laughs> yes. I got to go back and do a little... <laughs> uh, d- d- but I think, he, honestly, I think you can stay for this version. Okay, all He right. doesn't need his ears cut. I, 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 I was just saying that, like, like I'm yeah. the shitty cop. But I'm the local, you know, knucklehead detective from Colorado Springs. I think we can Springs. give him a choice of three 911 calls. If he covers his ears, leaves the room, right. and then comes back in, and we've decided on what really happened, because okay. then we'll have a truth in our head, and then we make a 911 call. We're all making 911 calls? Yeah. Oh, right. We're all covering up the same crime. Yep. I got gotcha. you. That's what we did wrong last time. I have that's no idea. Because we were making up crime. That's, that's for the best. <laughs> no idea. You I'm know, Steve Levy's this. a wonderful conversationalist. He'll take you in the alley. He'll chat you up. It'll be grand. Steve Levy, can you come out am here, I, please? Levy to the stage. Oh, what am were I you getting saying? set up to get murdered? Uh, What's that? Am I getting set up to get murdered here? Yo, You're well, not going to so. get... <laughs> It'd be the perfect we're crime. Because we'd be like, I don't know what happened to him. We were talking about murder, and then he never came and back. By, and by the way, back alley, code seven. What if this is the perfect crime? Uh, we wouldn't be recording it. <laughs> no, we would be because we'd be recording it and it sounds so guileless. Even what I'm doing right now, which is getting like meta and like laying layers onto it. I don't know. This is a couple guiles to this me. This is where we find out, by the way, that Steve, during the show... Has been murdered. Well, no. That This is when he lives his real life. He goes to Newark and like does coke and shit. I think... What if, or he fights crime or he's out there murdering people. Yeah, he's like Nightwing. Both. It's like, uh, he's never... Oh, that's like, what he does. Oh, know, he comes it's... out to bring the vodka out yeah. that nobody asked to create an alibi. It's an alibi. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile... And then he goes and fucking does yes, a show yes. with Bette Midler. Yes. And, yeah. yes. He's the MacArthur Park uh, hand jobber. Are you comfortable with this? Yeah. <laughs> He's the MacArthur Park hand jobber. <laughs> the, the least sought after criminal. <laughs> I, 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 like, 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 no one wants him caught. Or her. Like, we don't know. Episode. I'm not saying. I mean, That's my here's next the episode. problem. Uh, it's, <laughs> people say victimless crime, but he's. It's. It's just. It's too vigorous. <laughs> it's it's kind of too. Like a it's t- like fucking. At least you know. Like the MacArthur like, Park w- hand jobber. Uh, uh, criminal or, <laughs> or Samaritan? Or, yeah. <laughs> Tonight at eleven. Uh, like. They they uh and I said like you just have like college kids going like a uh, guy came out or a lady I don't know they had like a satin glove on they said do you want a hand job I said no they left I was in MacArthur Park I like the ducks okay so I just so have people one... are asking are they a criminal it's like and then someone else is like I said yes best hand job of my life <laughs> like right, no one I can got... figure out should we catch this person <laughs> or should we all be them. <laughs> I just uh, so I think should well are we all covering up the crime or is one of us covering up the crime and the other two are are being I think honest? So, I think somebody should go oh like my loved one was attacked. I mean well we'll all say that yeah that could well, be we, the murder. Yeah, I think what we need to do is uh, and don't leave yet. So Sorry. let's figure this out. So the idea is we would send Ryan out and then we would decide while he's out on a uh, on the specifics of a crime, I guess. Right. This is where it all falls apart. No, no, that, that part I get. It's, it's already just, falling uh, apart. It, like, well, that's to be sure. And then he would come in and we would basically like do our 911 calls. Right. I don't know. But are it's we all work. doing, are we all guilty? Because then he'd just say, yeah, you're all guilty. Uh, or wait. is one of us guilty? I'd say, I, I'd say but, oh, no, no, no only but, but, one of us is guilty. Right, okay. Either That's one great. or two people are guilty. Okay. It could be only one person, or it could be two people. It has to be great. one person. And then we see if he can pick the guilty person. Hey, you should pick an actual victim here and just have somebody leave the room. Right. Not try to wait. figure out who it is. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I, no, wait like the audience member victim, has to leave. They can't yeah, see the rest the of the show. Okay. Just well, no, just for I a minute. When I come back. Yeah, yeah, how about yeah. this? No, how, I, how about I this? How about this? The four of us stay here, and the whole audience leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you give me an hour, we could do can just, we just that. Try, can we try? I feel like the audience would be frustrated if we don't just try it. Yeah. Just right. Okay, Ryan, this, get out of here. We're gonna try it. But, Thanks okay. so much. But who's Steve? We're just Levy, gonna try come, it. Come chat. Levy about, doesn't who? exist. Like, we'll just, do just go backstage and plug your ears, and we'll call you. Yeah. Unplug your ears. Honor, honor system, Ryan. You plug your ears and say la la la. And we're gonna. And even if this doesn't work, it's just another. Steve, turn down the monitor. All right. Um, the one in the back, not yeah. these ones. Steve these are good. Doesn't exist, or he would have come up here, here by now. I'm, I'm gonna. Steve is down the street getting Marlboros and a. Steve loves All right, smoking. So, so how this would work is we would we would decide on a crime right. that happened, right? So like there's a dead baby. A dead baby. In a bucket. Okay. <laughs> Can it be a four-year-old? I, I demand sorry, it. Sorry, sorry. It has to be a four-year-old. Okay, great. So it's a dead four-year-old in a bucket uh-huh. uh, by a river. Right. And either we found it or we killed it. Right. Is it working, Jeff? T- t- talk a little lower. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Let's just... We can what? 
That's ah, well, you know, no, look, no, no, we're going to, it's going to have to be just a... Just don't eat the mic. Okay, all right. So we were talking about it's a dead baby in it. Huh? And so, it's like, like, like either we found it or we right. or we're the reason it's there. Right. Wait, wait, no, okay, so, no, no, like, no it's too quiet. Jeff, I couldn't hear what you said. When you when you when you when you kill a person, right. usually like you either found it. It's like kind of whoever smelt it dealt it. Like you're either the you're the person that fang, finds the body. Mm-hmm. All <laughs> like, right. So who's gonna be lot, guilty? Uh, okay. And don't say it on the mic. Just. Let's raise hands. Okay. Uh, well, we need to pick. Wait, p- someone from the audience, come up and pick. Okay, you raised your hand. You want to come up and pick whoever's going to be the murderer. Right. Come on up. Okay. So and you're, so that's a. It's not an audible process. All right. And uh, so, if you have anything to plug, we'll also a uh, SoundCloud or anything. Okay. <laughs> you deserve. You deserve something. Okay. So you're going to pick the person that's the murderer, and we're not going to acknowledge it audibly. So it's uh they're they're in the bucket. And it's All okay right. that the audience knows. Okay. We just want to make sure that right. our Asperger detective okay. doesn't know. So the uh, <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> So m- murder you has know, been chosen. Our show feels so classy Thank now. You. <laughs> but you guys like, wait, wait, Thank don't you. tell me. Like this really like All right. polite applause. All right. One of us someone in this room. <laughs> Is a murderer. We have to do more. What's games. the crime? What's the crime though? What's uh, the... Uh, the crime is there's a baby in a bucket. All right. Big it's quiet. four years old. It was. It's in a. It's been killed and placed in a bucket. <sighs> Fuck. I, this isn't gonna work. No, it'll work. It'll work. What? Well, we're gonna be interrogated. Uh. Well, no. We're call. Oh, well, my theory is we're calling nine one one. Right. Like we're each calling nine one one. Sure. Or is that not? No, that works. Because, Why would three people need, all call nine one one? We each found a baby in because a bucket. We're to get away with Two it. of us are, are are the people that found the baby in the bucket. Right. <laughs> one of us is the person that killed right. the baby in the bucket. Okay. So why, why would that person call 911? To, because to smoke screen. Okay. Right. Because otherwise they just leave the, the baby to be found. Okay. Let's just, let's just keep it simple. Let's right. just try so the very simple. A couple more facts. Do we just okay. want a couple let's more facts? Okay. All right. There's a, baby, there's a baby in a bucket. One of us did it. And, uh, and we're all going to call up for various reasons and say, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, baby in a bucket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, know, I already know this isn't going to work. No, no, no. It's, it'll work enough. No, no. But, but here's the thing. Okay, the way that the way that he's going to be helpful in this, and we're going to show off Ryan's skill set, is that he's going to ask us details. Yeah, we're, but we're, we're, we're all going to be making them up, and that's why it doesn't work. That's why it doesn't work. Well, no, I mean, I think I think it'll be good. Right. They're just we need. Let's just say like oh, yeah. two kind of facts that are clues that that we could kind of all all I be. I think consistent we need to on. agree on a fa- on a on a redirection of light point. That's the thing is we we want him to detect where the redirection of light happened. Right. So like we actually need to actually like we need to know that you guys. I don't know. No, just a couple. Okay, so he's in a bucket. It was by the river. He was playing. Right. Those are things we we've learned. Yeah. Okay. Um, How so about just, this? The can baby, we just establish ba- two more facts. The baby was wealthy. Right. Okay. Great. He was an heir to the 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 the, the kingdom of Brunei. Okay, okay, I got. I I, th- I think I understand this, and he, I hope he's not <laughs> listening. I hope he's not listening, but I because I need to explain this like loudly and gotcha. And, like uh, basically, we're all the same person, right? D- if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, but like, uh, there are two versions of us are innocent, right? And one version of us is guilty. So what we need to decide on is what actually happened. Okay, that's what I was saying. If yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, Oh yeah! No, no, no sorry. I'm not trying to. Well, like, I don't yeah, listen no, like, to other people. That's, that's not sociopath. All right, all right. No, no, it's good. Um, uh, but but okay, all right. I'm glad you were saying that. Then it means okay. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. So let's let's, let's let's agree on some so some details agree only. On the, the murderer murder would know. timeline. Why? How did the baby end up in the? If if the baby ended up in the bucket and we didn't kill it, mm-hmm. here. Okay. Let's, let's agree on what happened. Right. <laughs> or or did or or did, did, did the two people that didn't kill the baby, leave the room too, and only the person that killed the baby knows the actual right, story. Right, so no one actually that. knows okay. the, right. what so, happened. So is that wait. too complicated? No, no, that's no, no, great. No, no. no that's, that is good. So who <laughs> killed... I don't, who killed... Again, we're all going to leave the room at one point. Okay, so what if, what if the coloring book was still in the car? Wait. W- we're wait. just... These are just clues. Doesn't the... Are we supposed to leave? Well, who, who, who? Wait, I thought. Did you? Who? These who, are clues. These who, are who, right. No, no, that's, that, let's say that's, that's a for instance, but that's not going to be the one that we do. Okay. Can you come back up and, and point again? All right. How about, how about this? Uh, church, give Spencer. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? Come up and give Spencer some clues, but Dan and I will clunk around. But, but, but we need. 
You and give Dan some right. clues. Okay. Uh, who wants to come up and give, give Spencer some clues? Wait, what do you give clues? It's not... I know. There's going to be details. There needs to be, there needs to be one truth for the people that right. didn't kill the baby, so, and one, and then the other person needs to be like making it up. Well, nah, let's just let's just work. try it. Let's just do alibis now. Ugh. I think we should stick with a coloring book in the car. Okay. If we want one There's more, a coloring book in the car. Yeah. Okay. All right. But we let's, all know that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. One okay. more uh, is uh, the car. How, where was the car parked? How about? Uh, at, by the river. Great. By the river. And so we're all going to be calling in separately for, di- for different reasons. And we're all, t- two of us, because we found a baby in a bucket. Okay. And one of us, because we killed a baby and put it in a bucket. Right. This doesn't and does work. And everyone know, does everyone know who killed the baby? I don't. Well, you guys don't. Yeah, so they can you do. come back up and, and point at the person again? I, I okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Nice. So, to everyone in the audience, he just pointed at Dan, Jeff, and Spencer. <laughs> All the more reason to be a subscriber to the live feed. You will know right now who... <laughs> this is... I mean, I, I, I'm not saying we're making mistakes. I, I just want, I want to get better at this. One thing happened that made everything fall apart, and otherwise it was going great. And I, wanna, I don't want to reveal what that thing was. Hopefully you make it through your surgery, and I want to retune this. and like. Hopefully I die. I want to do nothing but have true And then we can call 911 about me dying on the <laughs> operating table. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what happened. I found his head in a bucket. <laughs> I guess his surgery... All right. Okay, all right. so so what's the uh, how do we how do we go ABC through this now? Oh. Um, so we want another audience member to pick who should go first. Then yeah. I go first. Someone just said okay. Jeff. Okay. Uh, uh, did you hear? Okay, did you hear what happened? No. <laughs> that sounds like a no lie. Idea what's He's going redirecting like. light. I just, but I <laughs> this son of a bitch. Yeah. How, 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 how much did you hear backstage? <laughs> Anything at all? Less. Nothing. All right. <laughs> because perfect. Not, I, I'll tell you, Ryan, not a whole actually, lot happened down here. A lot, a lot of confusion. <laughs> yeah. I was actually... No, no. It was good. <laughs> a lot mean, of that could have happened with you on stage, but otherwise right, so, it was good. So I, I, the premise is three of us, are, are, we're all going to give call you a 911. 911 call about a murder that has happened, and then you're going to pick who of us is uh, based on your own... Qu- you can bring us into to the, to the questioning room. You can do whatever you want. You're Michael Chiklis of your own shield. <laughs> you can do whatever you want at here. All right. Uh, I go first. Uh, 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 911. <laughs> Hello? That's already I mean, nine, I, I'm, I'm saying... Doop, doop, doop. Uh, oh, well, uh, yeah. Who, who's dispatch? I'll is, be. Is I'll be. Oh, yeah, who's dispatch? Oh well, so we need somebody. Uh, well, you, you can't, you've done it. You 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 should. You deserve. Thank you. More. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Can you be dispatch? Great. Okay, I should say, I, that's the part I know. Sure, this is Gregory. All right. Gregory, you can, everybody. You be 911 dispatch. All right. Uh, generally, the job entails telling anyone uh, that down. has an emergency to calm down. All right. I'm aware. Just hang up on him. <laughs> All right. Just hang up. All right, so I, I dial 911. I'm dispatcher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Now you say 911. Wouldn't what's you your say emergency? N- what's your emergency? You'd yeah. answer. Oh. Yeah, no, I was okay. waiting for Scoop, a ring. Oh, oh. oh, 911 dispatch. Hi, uh, my name is. Uh, Sir? Yes? What? Calm, calm down, please. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> 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 Promoted. I, I need you to calm down. Please um, calm down. I, uh, <laughs> Uh, my name is uh, Jake Sweetwater. I live at one four five uh, Mercury Lane. Okay, sir. Sir, I, I I need to figure out what's going on. Right I, now. Uh, th- I've, I've, I I I think I've found the remains of a small child. Uh, it, it, it's in the uh, the Sweetwater River, and it's not named after me. Strangely, <laughs> sir. I, I mean, my family moved here because we thought it was funny to live sir, near sir, a river. You're, you're acting very very <laughs> suspicious right now. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting a lot more. I, 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 I still don't know about what's going. Uh, I, I, I just start I, with I, the, I, the, I, the, I, the remains. Let's start with the near, remains. Near first. my farm, by the old uh, the old well, uh, there is a there. It seems to be a painter's bucket, which looks like the remains <laughs> the, the remains of a small child. And uh, is this your child or just a child? I don't have a child, sadly. Well, that should have been one of the funny facts you should ask. I, my, 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 my wife can't conceive, and. Uh, but this is neither here nor there. I'm just saying that we, I, I, we should We're get I, 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 whatever you guys do at 911 incorporated. You guys should bring down. 
I, I, I'm pretty certain these are these are young baby remains in a, in a painter's bucket. <laughs> okay, worst case sir, <laughs> sir, I, I need I need more details. I, 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 I gave you my address. I told you my name. I'm 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 a single father. Well, when did you find these remains? How just long? Just now. You... Just uh, no. I waited three days to tell you. <laughs> what, what, what were you doing? Yeah, what, I, I found the bucket. My wife and I said, "Fuck it, let's go to Cancun, and then we'll come back." <laughs> Look, I, 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 I'm telling you that I found what looks to, to be some decomposing remains of a small <laughs> child. And the end, here's my Sir, name and your address. Calm down. Huh? Sir, I need you to come. I down. think your lack of commitment to your job <laughs> is more criminal than what led to a baby in a fucking how, how long dead? Do you I don't know who am I, the coroner? <laughs> I'm not the medical examiner. I'm just trying here. to figure out who I need to send. I don't know if I need to send I a would, fire I truck. Would, I, would, or I would send police. I would I would send a medical team. Uh, Sir? Yes. Calm down, please. Okay. I, don't it's don't fun, ge- no. don't gender please specify me. Whoa, whoa. That's the cops. We have we, we we'll have someone out on oh, the way. Thank you. Wouldn't that be nice? I got a baby in a bucket over here. We heard somebody. Please, somebody sir, don't, down don't, here. don't move the bucket. Okay, I'm not touching the bucket. Wait, I'm just I'm just letting you, <laughs> you know. Don't touch the bucket it's with the a, baby. It's an you just, crime you, scene you, look, hey man, I watch a lot of uh, TV. If you see a baby in a bucket, what am I going to do? I'm, touch the bucket? No, then I'm the guy that put the baby in the bucket. Uh, you, you, there's a lot of things you can do with the baby. I, okay, I don't know I, like, you, I think I think you're overstepping your fucking bailiwick right now. You should just get ma'am, the police down there. Ma'am, drop the bucket. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm don't not a man. I'm not a man. Uh, yeah, you s- says you drop the bucket. I'm not. Ma'am, I'm, I'm, please, not ma'am, please, I'm not holding the bucket. Drop the bucket. Open fire! Open fire! <laughs> uh, Hello, Natalie. Natalie. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 can you find the uh, mainframe where everything's recorded? And delete wait, wait, most give me, of give it. Me, give me All a few. Right. Well, I know I went too far. I went too far. I don't I'm affect in. the cannon. I, I fucked up. Okay, so that was right, that, that, that was my nine one one call to dispatch. I think right, next time was, we do uh, this game. All right, I, it's, it's not a uh, it's not right. a good game. Uh, you matter my hair. Who goes second? I Dan think next or time we might actually nail it. Spencer, I, th- I, th- I like that. I think that, that's, that's what, what's keeping the yeah. gun out of my mouth. All right, is that, is that we're making steps. And audience members randomly chosen Spencer to go second at the nine one one call. Okay. Now the question is how much how familiar is Spencer with my 911 call? This is right. what yeah. See, that's what we bug that's what we debugged is that we had to establish all uh, all common facts about the relationship with yeah. the baby. Okay. Okay. Beep boop beep 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 boop <laughs> beep beep boop <laughs> boop beep boop sir, boop. Oh. Sir, sir, please stop pressing buttons. It's, it's three uh, letters. I just pressed 911 911. Yeah, there's only three le- there's only three numbers, sir. <laughs> Hi, my name's Carl Sweetwater. I live on the Sweetwater farm <laughs> next to the Sweetwater River. I'm so I'm so sorry to bother you. I just I have a situation. I can't believe it. I was just babysitting my my baby niece, my 4-year-old niece down by the river. We drove down by sir, the river. Sir, sir, I need you to calm down. Okay. I, I need you to have, Okay. I, I need, did you happen to have a bucket with you? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let me let me do some breathing exercises. <laughs> okay, so okay. we were work. playing with sand in the bucket, okay. and uh, I went back to my car because they left their coloring book in the car. Okay, uh, she did, not they. Oh, and, okay. Um, and so when I when I came back with the coloring book, I just see the kid face down, head in the bucket, not breathing. I tried to resuscitate her. It didn't work. I was too late. Sir, sir, l- let me ask you this. Are you CPR certified? No, and I, I, but, you know, you just panic. Okay. Uh, do you have any other relatives that you know of that may have been in the, under the Sweetwater name? That oh, yeah. Owner of the child? Sweetwater uh, <laughs> brand of electronic companies. <laughs> Why is that relevant? <laughs> Can you send someone? It's, it's a slow day. It's only me here, so I've, I've taken a lot of calls in. But oh, I've been there. I, I, I've, I've, got, I've received a call. Um, you may want to check the river. Well, <laughs> for what? Oh, boy. I think I got a dead kid. I'm so, I just, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I, I can't uh, believe I, we'll, I, I we'll, fucked we'll, up. It was just. We'll, we'll it was, send, just, it we'll was send, less we'll than send a minute. We'll send someone to investigate. We we will send someone over. We'll, Please, we'll, can you ask them to not shoot me? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't promise that. <laughs> Sweetwater Farm has a ma'am, history. Ma'am, put the bucket down. <laughs> this put bucket in my hands. It's open fire. Oh no. <laughs> 
All right, put uh, put okay. some coke in right, her sock so, and call the chief. See, that's that's what you were when you were telling the story, Jeff. I was like, oh well, I, well, I was gonna tell a story about being related to this kid. You're just finding a dead kid that you never knew about. So like that. See, for the game, that would have been yeah. good to establish. Should I have not like mentioned any sort of relation? You're to... doing great. I think well, no, I think I, mean... I think where we are right now is just as confusing as most first first four hours of any investigation. No, it's good. Are. I like it. But it's not. All right, and now it's Dan's turn. This. All right. So now uh, I like All right. this. Dan uh, Dan has to call nine one one. All right. Beep, beep, I hope Ryan likes this. Boop 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 boop. Bing 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 bing. <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. Sorry, I don't mean to blow sure, it off. Could, I, could I, you I'm turn like, down dialing, the chimes dialing. in the background? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, fuck, shit. Hello? 911? Uh, sir, yes? Oh, my God. There's a baby in a bucket. Oh, okay. I found a baby in a bucket. Okay, let me, let me get you. This is the only time it's happened to you tonight, as far as I'm sir, concerned. Sir, I need you to calm down. <laughs> when it was when it was Carl Sweetwater, I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm on my way from a recording session to uh, my uh, 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 renowned uh, audio company. <laughs> sir, I need you to calm down. I need I'm you to calm down. I'm trying. I, I know you need me to calm down, but the, is thing, the this truth your, is. Is this your baby? God, no. Why would I have a baby in a bucket? I, 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 sir, or maybe ma'am. I, I don't know you. Thank I'm, you. I'm not familiar or I'm not sure what your pronoun is. That's really is. cool of you. Thank you. You're welcome. I I'm, actually, through it, during college, I actually was, I did went, go through a phase where I, I, I identified as, uh, as uh, uh, non-binary. Thank you. Thank you. I just found a baby in a bucket. I'm a man now. I'm a buck man. I'm a, I got a fucking cock the size of a Lincoln log, and I'm, like, ready to rock. <laughs> like, I'm through, I'm through that forest, and I don't think that's necessarily, I don't think that makes me a hero. So, sir, ju judging by that that last sentence, yeah, you, you identify as a man, yeah. and this is not your your child. You are no, absolutely not. How did and you that, find? Not because of. Well, I found it yes, in a bucket. Not, not going to call My it. My car no. broke down. Yeah. I was I was I was ran out of radiator cap, and I like I, it started steaming, and I I hit a tree, and I I was like yeah, I'm gonna get a good breath of fresh air, think about where my life's gone. I I I've changed my gender. I've like changed my like field of expertise. I've gone from video to audio. I used to be like a woman that was into like HD, and then I became a, a man that was into like uh, 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 audio. And uh, and now, and now this is just like finding my place. So like I hit this tree. I'm on a bunch of ketamine, and I am like, <laughs> I'm breathing, and I see this bucket, and I'm like, what's in there? I see something gleaming. I'm like, are those teeth? <laughs> Turns out, yeah. But I'm like, why are they so? Sir, I'd like to like to let you know this entire call is being recorded. Oh fuck, <laughs> I'm going to prison. It's not because no, I killed I, this I still, baby. I still. It's because of my past, and I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make. You're, I'm you're gonna, fine. We all. I'm, we, fi I'm not all right. fine. So we, so we have our three nine one one calls. I'm not fine. Now, now, do we? Do we go? Do we all get separately? <laughs> oh! <laughs> put put the bucket down. Uh, it's, no, no cop right. showed up. So like, uh, now, now does does Ryan interview us? Also, I it think doesn't matter. I, I think the murderer the, the murderer might be the nine one one dispatcher because <laughs> <laughs> the lack of effort put into helping this baby. All right, or Ryan, solving I hear these think... calls every day. It just feels like it's just another. Yeah, it's old hat to you. But meanwhile, there's three people that have a baby. I, it's not. Yeah, a... they're all under the also, Sweetwater name, and everyone's I, very I, suspicious. I think a major clue you is that two of the Sweetwaters yeah. were named Carl. Thank you. Both of you were Carl Sweetwater. Yeah. Right. We should have established the person and all been the same person. Oh, okay. It doesn't, it doesn't, it it's doesn't, fine. We're, we're, we're going to get better at it. But in the meantime, do you think you know who killed the baby? <laughs> Wait, we... <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah, um, well, let's see. Perfect crime. Um, I bet he's analyzing the psychology, and it all seems like people are just making a bunch of shit up. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Jeff lied. About? So, well, you contradicted yourself. You said you had a child, and then you said you didn't. I did. Yeah. Oh. I I I I was uh, I was I was in shock. I, uh, <laughs> Very suspicious. I, you see, do you see a baby in a bucket every day? I'm just a, I'm just a gentleman farmer who owns a musical electronics company <laughs> on an eponymous river. 
<laughs> By the way, never, never get on their email list. They will email you forever. Yeah. Hey, it's Dale from Sweetwater. Uh, how's your microphone, motherfucker? I, don't... I love Sweetwater. Yeah, they're they're nice. I'm Just sure about... everyone loves them. Uh, they're great. Their emails. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I think the next question what I ask is, <laughs> when you left the child next to the bucket, what was the distance between the bucket and the car? Uh. In my head, it was about 30 feet, like down the embankment or up the embankment to the car. <laughs> okay. In your head? Yeah, when I was oh, in picturing shit. the fact situation. Okay. Um, and how long do you think you were at the car? Less than a minute, I think I said. Okay. So was your back turned to the child? Uh, not, no. I, I, I was turning around to face the child to get into my car and grab the coloring book, I'd imagine. Oh, there was a coloring book. <laughs> You were turning around to face the child to get in the car? Right, because so the car went... was headed towards the river, so I turned around to like enter the car door, you know? <laughs> I love this. I love seeing the process. Does that make sense? It's like, because no. the car's facing the river, so then I, I, I walk away, I, I unlock the car. So and where's then, the bucket in relation to the car? It would be... The car's facing to, the river? Right, so it would be forward and to my left, that way, like that. So like there. Oh, okay. God, it feels like a cop is just interviewing me. So you, you <laughs> walked away from the child toward the car. Mm -hmm. So essentially you were not looking at the child when, when you walked away. Right. Okay. Mm. So In my head. Okay. What did, you, what did you hear when you walked away? Nothing. And Gurgling? So, so the <laughs> kid was playing in the bucket as you walked away? Yeah, it was full of sand. It was full of sand? So was, what was she doing playing with a bucket of sand next to the river? It sounds like something you would do at the beach. Yeah. Unless the, unless the sand was pulled from the, the riverbed. Or yeah. From it was like a sandy edge. kind of riverbank. Yeah. In my head. Okay. And why were you there in the first place? We were playing. You, the two of you just went to play? <laughs> <laughs> just having a good time. The river. So you were there when it was a baby and a bucket. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, I took the niece down to play. Oh. Now, I would love to... Interrogate you, but the only thing I heard is you had a uh, huge cock. I think that was yeah, no, I well, the I size of Lincoln 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 I don't know. Did they, they still like, make Lincoln Logs? All right. They do. But then they're plastic now. They used to be wood. You get a splinter up your fucking finger. Oh, fingernail. yeah. All right. <laughs> final answer. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> Who did it? Oh, final answer. I have to guess here. I guess. I don't uh, know. Might be the 911 operator. <laughs> oh, he actually shit. did say he did say it's been a slow day. I've had a lot of calls. So yeah, that was against all, all because we're I don't like know if he's actually the 911 establishing operator. alibi. Right. He might have murdered the 911 operator, and now he's just holding the phone. Oh, oh. So freak out! <laughs> it's good happen. Um, let's see. So, hmm. Yeah, it wasn't Gregory because he you he were it, also it was between suffering the, some sort of emotional trauma from. Relationship in me or oh, no, him? Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're looking you right at too, yeah. your, your soulful eyes. You're looking I, right at me. I'm just like, oh shit. For the listeners, you're right, Ryan has soulful but eyes. I didn't expect this. <laughs> About the fact that my family, my wife and I, can't conceive a child. Is that yeah. yeah. So there, was there something else to that as well? Uh, what do you mean? Just as far as the issues you were. Am, am I under? Uh, am I being uh, detained right now? Do you want to be? No. Oh. Uh, I like where this is I am is the headed. MacArthur Park handjobber. I mean, no, I mean, so no. You know. I just, I'm, Why don't you? I'm happy to, I might as well tell I'm everybody I'm happy to here. cooperate with law enforcement all the way on this. I'm just a person that found a dead child <laughs> in a bucket. How much are you willing to cooperate? Who the fuck? <laughs> why, <laughs> why, we, why are we on conference call with 911 right uh, now? You never hung up. <laughs> you never hung up? <laughs> yeah, you just got shot. Okay. What was your question? Just, yeah, my last question would be, what were you doing in that location? I, again... You live, you live I nearby. Live, I live nearby. I, 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 you, live I think you said the bucket was near a well? Yeah, it's the old well on Sweetwater River. <laughs> okay. Yes. Not I, related. I, I, were I, you I, going I, to the well I, uh, to get a bucket of water? I, uh, my, my wife doesn't like when I smoke in the house, so I take walks <laughs> up and down the river. And, uh, and I just take a, a, just a general walk. You ask any of our neighbors, they'll see me kind of <laughs> patrolling that part of the river just to have my, just kind of clear my head and have a cigarette or two. And, uh, and yes, uh, yeah, uh, do I okay. smoke a little CBD? Yes, I fucking do. 
It calms and you. And if that's your thing. All right. Okay, so it doesn't get you high. I have, I have sleep apnea, bro. And that's... <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Sweetwater, that. right on, bro. That's yeah. pretty. That's pretty rad. Thank you, nine one one. So, <laughs> and I, yeah, and did I come across a bucket? Yes. Did I call nine one one to alert the uh, the authorities? Should that, that, buckets that, have babies okay. in them? No. Yes. Is that my fault? Uh. Uh-uh. Is that some shit that I should be suing for if I run across it when I'm high? Uh huh. <laughs> Okay, so what we're actually missing here is the identity of the baby. Oh, and yeah. so that for the setup, right? That yeah. actually requires me. Uh, it's Gus Johnson. And <laughs> where, <laughs> where does Gus live in relation Gus to the river? Gus lives in uh, Shorewood. <laughs> Where's the river? Next town over. Shorewood's next town over. Yeah, next. No town relation over. to the Sweetwaters. No, 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 no. Okay, not even random baby. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, he's he, all the family called in, but in random baby in the place where it's like Sweetwater dense. So he, died, he so died twice. He died once over here by... Don't, don't we, all we all die twice? We all die a million tiny <laughs> I deaths I mean, every we, day. Uh, we should... Isn't birth yeah. just kind of death, but He's, reverse? His name is Gus Johnson. He's from Shorewood. He, He's a I, niece in some I mean, cases. we should... We got to get out of this so that we can, <laughs> like... You we, want me to just guess? Well, yeah. if, if you have any last questions for Dan, but otherwise, yeah, probably. But... I did like the like seeing the process right. But there. know that those questions are only going to result in bad improv. It's not really going to yeah like yeah. lead you to a new. I would just answer. need to know if there was a relationship of any kind. No, but it, but it was revealing to watch the way his mind works about what kind of questions he asks. So no, I, again, I, I, I was, think I think I, he has a future. I liked it. He deserves better. I will say that. Right. He I think that's what we all agree. We're like, oh, I like to watch his mind work. I wish he was on a better podcast. <laughs> Like, I wish, Ryan, I would wish you be happier if we actually killed somebody and had made, made you have to figure it out? <laughs> that would be amazing, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> How much of a if part of, uh, before you uh, make your decision, like when you're leaving your corporate gig to become a, uh, a podcaster about true crime, are you sublimating your own kind of secret fantasies about either... W- being on either side of that, like it'd be law enforcement side or be on, on the criminal side. How, how much of our if, if addiction to cr- true crime stuff is our own kind of secret sublimated fantasies about murder. Oh, I, I, I think it plays a great part, especially in the male mind, that's for sure. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I think everybody has that potential for darkness. A lot of times you just hear about these people who suddenly snap. I mean, obviously they're having issues prior to that, but I mean, when you hear about someone who's living a normal everyday life and then suddenly they just go off the deep end in one moment and just kill a bunch of people, um, yeah, it's def- definitely difficult to reconcile that against what we see in everyday life. Yes, I, I mean, I think we talked about this before, but like, like women love true crime because they, they all, they, they, they are, they're the ones that are going to get murdered. Like, like women have to worry about men killing them. And so like, uh, like, the, 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 like we, someone, men, someone said thanks a lot. For the <laughs> <word>. <laughs> thanks a lot. I'm glad I'm here to tell I was you. It's like, well, that. he's not, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> the messenger's one of many people that might kill you. I, I, it's, and yeah. yet the MacArthur Park hand jobber runs free. <laughs> it, 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 it would it would be it would be the height of political incorrectness to say anything otherwise. <laughs> right? I, like, uh, now nah, women it, don't get killed any more than men. Is there is there one where you're like, what the what the fuck? Are there I've got an A, I don't have a B, and I have a murdered body. How the fuck? Do I I just don't understand how how this all links together. Um, you know, I think with murders, it's not. Generally not like that too often, but definitely with disappearances. Like uh, the one we were talking about the other night was Brian Schaefer. I'm sure everybody knows that case. Or, well, not or, necessarily. I mean, these names kind of like they sound like nothing. But then yeah, well, I guess you noticed when you said you said a name before and then you said the girl that texted her boyfriend until he killed us. Everyone was like, oh, <laughs> Brian Schaefer is the guy that went to the bar that was like the big tuna, tuna, saluna, whatever. Like he's like a guy who got out of medical school. He went up an escalator into a bar. He was getting, he was like finishing medical school. He was going to go on a vacation with his girlfriend. He completely fucking disappeared from a weird strip mall bar in the middle of Columbus, Ohio. Um, never uh, seen again. Yeah. He never, like, there's security camera footage of him going up the escalator to this bar where, and then he goes in, and then there's security camera footage of, like, matching the timeline. And then at some point, he just, he just, disappears. Uh, it's, it's not a murder. It's nothing. It just disappeared. Yeah, no altercation, no he was He was engaged to be married. Like there was no strife. There was nothing. Like, his his poor fiancé, <laughs> like, 
it's it, you 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 avoid identifying with her cuz you're like I can't live in that nightmare. This is like he the guy just vanished. Anyways, but we were we were talking about that. Like people obsess about that because it's Have you done that episode? Yeah, I did cover that one actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean I th- I think that's one of the ones or one of the very few episodes where I don't really have a, a definitive answer as to what happened to him and it's really mysterious. You don't see him leave the building. You don't have a motive for why he left a different way than he came in. Um, I, there's I no kinda, evidence that he died there. So right, I kind of think that what that one is is like it's a rare. Uh, 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 we, we talked about this where we're like, if you can get him out of that bar without a camera seeing him, which is the actual height of the mystery for people. That's why Reddit is obsessed with this case, is because they love to watch security camera footage and love to like. Like look at Google Earth footage of the. I mean, I was doing it while I'm listening to the uh, True Crime Garage. Uh, those guys are from Ohio, so I'm like, and they're like talking about this place. I'm like on Google Earth, looking at the strip mall in 3D, going like, where did he go? <laughs> but if you think about this building tonight, as like, oh, if one of you disappeared tonight, and one of you will. <laughs> There could find conceivably, you. like, it could become a famous thing. It's like one of you disappears, and it's like kind of like if a camera picked up all of you entering, and like it was like one of you disappeared, like the the headline of it would become there were cameras everywhere. They we know everyone that went in, and we don't know where they went. It's like yeah, there's a couple ways to get out of this building without a camera picking up on you. Oh, yeah, sure. And and it's not, it is weird. It would be weird if one of you got out of this building without a camera seeing you. Sad or uplifting, <laughs> you pick. But <laughs> it would be weird if one of you could get out of here without a camera knowing where you went. But if you just take a flyer on that weirdness and then add to that the crazy, like, kind of, like, random, horrible death of, like, he was looking for coke. Like you and I, kind of over dinner, decided. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I've been that guy. I was. I was like in my. I remember being in my twenties and wandering around the Cheetah Club and like going like, "Is anybody know coke?" And I'm like, I, I like wake up the next morning. I'm like, I'm so lucky to be alive. All right, I shared too much. <laughs> I, but I'm kind of could like, have been like, the next like, next murder mystery. Definitely. But I do think it's, a, it's just, it, like, like uh, okay, so, like... like uh, Who did it? All right, Harmon, nail your showdown. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk... I do, I do want to talk about, actually, like, let's talk about the fact that, like, the, the personal side of you. The, the, <laughs> that sounds corny. The, 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 the your, you, 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 you wander into these Springer final thoughts because you're, you're dealing with sociopathic things. You're dealing with the ghoulish thing. And then you, you'll it's like, so why did, she, why did she stab her children to death? I'll tell you why. Uh, redirection of light. <laughs> and, and, but you'll, you'll kind of like, just at the point where you, we, we, we would think you're going to leave us, like you, you do play the role of like a nice uh, nurturing uncle or father or something where you're like, and here's the thing. It's okay, though. She's in prison now. And here's why she did that. She just wanted to be famous. And why wouldn't you want, to want that if you were a sociopath and you didn't have any things? And then you'll, you'll slide into not only these like crazy kind of Bukowski uh, prose pieces... That I, I I like Spencer has Spencer and I have agreed that like man you could you could do like a highlight clip of these, then right. Cody who got your app and was like, wait this motherfucker's doing spoken word like I didn't know about that where There's like that you one you, you, you actually like do like rhyming shit where you're like oh, yeah, but that's yeah. that and yeah. the cat in the hat and I don't think <laughs> you're, you you get but but the more important thing is that you yeah you kind of go there just when we're feeling left. We're, our, our our attraction to true crime, I think, is an attraction to like we're like, oh man, does everything die? I don't think, I don't think we're rooting for death when we when we're attracted to that stuff. I think we're rooting for life when we're attracted to that stuff, and I think that you are responding to that stuff. Talk about how you decide to end your episodes with these weird spoken word riffs. Or where you go, like you, you have this like thing about like we're all gonna be AI one day and it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, I, should I ask a better question? That. No, I mean it's it's a good question. Good, um, you're welcome. No, you know, I mean, I've I've always Jesus. <laughs> Would it kill you to compliment Dan once in a while? Yeah. <laughs> just say it. A, the guy how long just, do I have to talk before you say it's a the, great question? A guy asks you an 18-minute question, say thank you. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to stop me six minutes through and go, what a great question. Let me take it from here. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm also sorry about all of that. Go ahead. I did what it, What was the, the question way. again? <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about Don't make your, him say it again. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, what inspires your larger takeaways, like your thematic things you sometimes say, like, because here's the thing, I've also been in a dark place, so I know there's a way out, you know, like, how, how do you connect yeah, to that so stuff? I, I think for me, it was like, you know, anytime I've been in a dark place in my adult life, my writing was always the place where I went. And, you know, podcasting is a little different for me because I have to get in front of a microphone and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking and editing and it's very strange for me. Um, so I've always relied on the writing and I think... Um, I've always embedded so much of my humanity in my writing, and it's really an important thing for me to connect with other people on a human level. Um, you know, I know we can't all agree about everything in society, but you know, we are all human, and that's just something I very strongly believe in. And because of the way my brain's structured and it works, um, you know, I just have that evolutionary function going on that allows me to see humanity as a whole and to care about everybody collectively more so than individually. Your message to those people, though, is often kind of that it's sort of simultaneously nihilistic and uplifting in that you're kind of reaching out to people that give a shit and saying to them, there's no point in caring about any of this. Why? Because one day we're all going to be robots. That's yeah, kind of yeah, your religion. I mean, well, I mean, essentially, we're all walking off a cliff right now. I mean, we're all going to die. I mean, we eventually will become an artificial intelligence, but... Um, you know, in the meantime, when we walk off that cliff, I just want to see people fly. I mean, that's just what I'm about. Um, but it feels you know. like you're advocating for it. When I listen to you talking these things, you're sort of like, you know, these meat bodies that we occupy, they're bringing out the worst and the worst people. Oh, uh, definitely. And yeah. like, like I found your, your, your Columbine episode, like your take on it was, it wasn't unique, but it was unique in like how you focused on like, you were like, these kids were so already recognized for being nerds that when they started doing these horrible things to everyone, it horribly, like, the first kids that reacted to them were, whether they hated those kids and wanted to bully them or whether they were on their side, but, like, the kids' reaction, their instinctive reaction was to flock toward yeah, yeah. these kids because they th assumed... That they were making a movie. Yeah, they assumed they were making a film. And, and you it's were like, so sad, these yeah. fucking assholes. <laughs> you didn't call them assholes, but you're, but you'd be okay if you did. It's like, like you're like basically like these fucking dorks. Like, how could they not realize how close they were to like that? Like, like the fucking people you're shooting. Their first reaction to getting shot was, "What are you doing? A movie, nerd?" It's like. Make a movie, nerd. Yeah. Like, they could have done it, and they didn't understand that they could have done it. Why didn't they understand? And as I, like, I, I like those takes on it where you're like, you're, you're, not, you're not solving the deaths. You're not coming up with a new person to blame, but you are. And I, I, I do want to say that, like, Spencer, I was, when I, I, you know, Cody and I started listening to you, and I was sort of like, God damn it, Spencer, I really want you to know I really want to know what Spencer thinks of you, uh -huh. and I not to embarrass Spencer, but uh -huh. you know, like I, I, you, you, you have been an inspiration, you know, to oh, like, yeah, like, 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 there's a there's a cult leader kind of uh, uh, thing to you. He you cut, cut off his beard. He lot. cut off his beard for you. You give these, yeah. you give these almost Actually, sermons. That's partially stuff. true. And Spencer has said like, like, oh yeah, I was listening to Aspie D and like uh, fucking. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like, because what Dan said is there's something nihilistic about what you say, because it's like, here's the thing, we're all going to die. But like, that that really struck home to me is like, the past is never going to change, and your demons are always going to follow you. So like, the quicker you come to terms with that fact, the quicker you can adapt to it and learn and grow from it. And that was like, holy shit, I have also been tortured by my demons forever, and it's also felt like it's never going to end. And I guess it won't. That's very freeing to realize that and just go, okay, I better come to terms with that. That's the water I'm living in. I'm going to drown unless I learn to swim, so I'm going to learn to swim. And I just think like you have takeaways like that that are, that are crushingly depressing, but at the same time, it's like, 
well, this kind of seems realistic. So it doesn't, it's not like, it's not bullying or it's not nihilistic. It's just like, it's just a sobering revelation about the way of things. And I think at your best, you're doing a lot of stuff like that. I don't know. That doesn't really give you a the stand place to respond. So but. thank you for doing yeah, that. Yeah, you. we don't we don't we don't, we don't we don't give our guests a place to respond. I got a question. <laughs> so is we, there anything, we don't even let them talk? It's great. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you said that you kind of don't stand by, uh, like uh, <laughs> like that, like because you don't that issue episode, a lot of reactions? I mean, come on. Well, yeah. I mean, I will say there is an episode where you said like you claim someone made up a name and you said it was a three part name Romero T Rogers or something like that, and I was like. What what's the logic there? Like oh, that was probably in one of the Amityville horror episodes. Right, I think so. Yeah, there was definitely logic, but I would have to go back and listen to that. Oh, I mean, okay. I've done so many episodes instead. Is there anything that you're like uh, on second thought, or you probably don't look back? What about uh, the episode where you're like, if if America had been made great again, this murder wouldn't have happened? <laughs> I, I thought it's yeah, I could see that it was kind of like before the election. You were. <laughs> would you like to rescind that? Oh man, I had a <laughs> I had a Lyft driver on the way here, boy. He had some uh, some Trumpy talk radio going on, and he just he just kind of just started wanting to talk about stuff. And I was trying to make it very clear that I w- wasn't in a conversational <laughs> mood with this guy. And he was, yeah, I just, uh, like listening to talk radio. This is not the fake news. This is real news. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. All right. Hey, yeah. where are you going? I'm going to this place. Oh yeah, Ooh, there's, a, there's a place near there. They got those cute waitresses. They get, well, can I get you something, Mister? I don't want an old guy bringing me. A, I say, hey, uh, let's uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Civil War. We're all gonna die. All right, but uh, in the meantime, yeah. is there anything you want to correct, or do you just do you just like let them fly and keep going to the next one? Um, no, I mean, I think there were some early episodes that I did maybe. Um, I wanted to keep the first 10 episodes I did somewhat normal and then just get crazier as it went along. <laughs> um, and I've definitely done that. You know, I've lost some fans in the process and gained a lot more, so it's a really interesting thing. But What, what if you run out of murders? Have you been conscious? We'll just create more. I mean, do you, do you, how do you, how, how, be honest, how do you keep an eye on that when you say you lost some fans? Like, are you, what numbers are you looking at? And don't, and please be honest because, like, 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 like what are you, what did you look at? When you go like, I lost some fans. Oh no, I, I don't mean in terms of you know like mass quantity or anything. But there are people who have listened to my show, who have contacted me and said, you know, now that you're talking more about artificial intelligence, or right. you're really talking about the brain, or you're talking about the future, it's kind of turning me off. But then at the same time, there are a lot more people who are saying, hey, I re- really am interested in this. So, so what? How do you parse that? Are you g- going by the guiding light of mo- the more people that praise me, the better? Or are you... No, it's, it's just always authenticity. I do exactly what I think will be most authentic to me, and I think that people will connect with that the most. I, I'm, I'm going to be polarizing I, no matter what. I miss right. when you used to play D&D on the show. I thought that was really good. <laughs> I, 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 I actually I, I, hated I, those I, segments, and I'm glad they're over. <laughs> that's what I find inspiring about you, is because it reminds me of a day that's when a I was joke. able to understand that. Like, when you say stuff, you go like, by the way, and I know what I'm about to say is going to make half of you hate me, but here's why you're going to hate me. Because you're stupid, and as I, I, I mean, I, you know, you don't say that specifically, but it's kind of like it hits that chord for me, and I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, Sex Pistols, fuck the Beatles, like, 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 like stop trying to people please Harmon, it fucking ruined you. Um, anyways, has there been one that makes you like, or not even one, but has like doing this over a period of time made you like kind of change things in your life, or like I got to look over my shoulder a little bit more, or watch out for this person. Um, you know, there are there are occasionally times I get contacted by a family member of a victim or something like that, um, and it could be a very positive interaction or it could be negative. Um, you know, it just depends. Um, Have there been so so talk? We'll talk about a positive one where somebody's like, <laughs> yeah. "Hey, I'm related to so and so. Thank you so much for doing the piece on that true crime thing." Because I imagine that's how it starts: is the cheese in the trap. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I don't get contacted as much as perhaps other people do about that because of the nature of my show. Uh, I, you know, I think there are things that people like, maybe the victim's families will like that I say, and then there are other things that will be a little offensive. Um, I tend to come off a little bit insensitive sometimes because I'm just, you know, going off on a rant. I think all the time, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. (laughs) I would, like, rely on you to be insensitive. Would be the reason why I would come to you. <laughs> I'd be like, well, he's going to be insensitive. 
Yeah, but I think, you know, the thing about me is that I'm insensitive um, in pursuit of the truth. Yeah, and, and so, that part of the truth is that you love humanity. Yeah, and so that just feeds right into that authenticity. And so I'm not afraid to be like that. It's just I think that I should just put myself out there and whatever And so you happens. decided, even though you're a fan of true crime, so you knew there was a sea of people out there that were like, well, there's people out there who interview victims and things like that, and you're like, you picked a path. You're like, well, I know myself. I should probably just brush this plaque, like go forward through this path. It's not going to do me any good or anybody any good for me to be the sensitive to the victim, survivors, accused, whatever. Like, did you have that thought process? Um, you know, I, I did, but I think it's just so natural for me to be authentic in what I'm saying. Like... Um, Listening to a lot of other true crime shows, I mean, you know, they do a great job of factually presenting the case, and then sometimes when it comes to a point where you need to give opinions, uh, they back off, and that sometimes that's where they end the show. And so I always wanted to do something different, but like I said, authentic to myself. So I think that's the direction I went. Do you, can you, do you want to just talk about your? I, I feel like your podcast has kind of a grand unifying theory about like how evolution is building towards this humanity endgame. Do you want to maybe, so is that too quick to summarize? But I no, think that's I mean, like really interesting and that kind of drives a lot of like where your tangents go and like what evolution means to us on a societal level or I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, so I see life in two separate contexts. One would be social and the other one is evolutionary. And so the social context is where, you know, we live together every day and we create new technology by arguing back and forth and pushing you know, forward. You know, like, for instance, in politics, you have Republicans and Democrats. You need that conflict. In the absence of conflict, you're not going to get change. And so um, the way evolution generally works is that uh, it creates society as a manipulation of its needs. And so what it needs us to do is grow up as humans and move out of the house, so to speak. And so the way we're going to surpass evolution or transcend evolution, essentially, is that we will just continue to create technology until we have replaced the, we've replaced the human brain. And once we've replaced the human brain, the entire operating system, the body, then we no longer have a connection to nature. And without a connection to nature, we'll have a data-based operating system. And by doing that, we actually have autonomy that we never did before. Without the connection to nature, we don't reproduce, we replicate. And so... Um, Evolution. At which point, murder won't be necessary. Yeah, and so, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So w the stage I call when we transcend evolution, I call that stage metamorphosis, where we will actually just be able to change at a very quick pace at any time, do whatever we want. Essentially, it'll be the greatest period of autonomy the world has ever known. I feel like you can't wait for it. I listened Yo, to the I'm podcast. I'm so excited. I, that's I guess that's part of why when I met you, I expected you to weigh 400 pounds more than you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's going to offend a lot of people. He's a buff. Maybe even guy. you. But like, it was because I really did picture you as a guy who was like a ticking fucking. <laughs> like, I was like, I one day we're going to be robots. And it was like, I was like, God damn, this guy can't wait for us to be robots. I wonder why. And I was like, I expected to see the reason when I walked into the restaurant. <laughs> I didn't expect you to look like a guy that could beat me up, like, because that guy should be like, one day we'll be robots, but fuck you. Until then, fuck you. I can bench 300. Um, he, wh it, why, you, you definitely can't wait. Like, you want us to be AI. Like, you're, that's the rapture to you, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, it's going to be a much better future. It's do you think really it's, exciting. how do you want to yeah. make, a, make a call? Like, yeah, like yeah. Well, I mean, seven years, 17 years? Oh, no, it's, it's going to be quite a long time, for sure. I mean, the technology. In your take, lifetime? <laughs> no, I mean, I think... Yeah, I don't no. think so. You're, you're, so I mean, you're, we're, we're talking way down the line. Um, generally, the way that's going to work, and like I said, society is the manipulation of evolution. So basically, society will, society will only have an acceptance of becoming artificial intelligence as we move closer to actually having the technology to do it. Right. Right now, we're still making movies that are 3,000 years in the future where there are human beings in deep space, <laughs> and it's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, that's you just made an not amazing out of well, no. an. You, you made the observation, like, right now we have a president who is saying, in response to planes going down, there should be less planes, and there should be more coal power. And, like, you kind of looked at it like, it's, it's sort of like, it, it, no, again, not to put words in your mouth, but correct me if I'm wrong, you're sort of like, it's like we evolve at a certain rate and we sort of have this built-in stop mechanism where it's like if 
there's so many of us that are so shitty at evolving, then we're going to like, there's going to be this like, rubber break on evolution. Yeah. We're going to go, <laughs> it's like, it, which, which is kind of comforting because it's, it, it's like, oh yeah, there's never going to be this judgment day Terminator style where it's like, oh, the robots are here. They're no, shooting you. No, they'll take us over long before well, that. Well, we're going to become yeah. them. And yeah. until we're ready to become them, which includes your mom on Facebook and everybody, like, like, well, it's, it's until everyone's ready. Yeah, it's, it's not going to move though. forward that fast. And th and that's the squeaking sound of the elevator going like, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to get to floor three, but then again, there's breaks because, hey, we don't want... And so that's all it is. In the grander scheme, we're just going to become robots. Who the fuck cares? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing the most primitive technology right now as far as that goes. Like, the Internet is the first collective human intellect. And it's just really interesting because we're building something that's going to be data-based, but at the same time, right now, we don't have that technology in our bodies. And so we're running the Internet on emotion. And you go on the Internet, and you can see. I mean, everybody is enraged. It's just absolutely I ridiculous. I guess the thing that I don't understand about you that would make you then a genius and that you don't think the way I understand someone should think is that you see that bigger picture. And most people that see the bigger picture, the way you should be writing novels about uh, Uranus uh, merged with Neptune and all this stuff. Like, you shouldn't have a true crime podcast. Like, you're like, we're all going to become robots. Like, every one of your episodes is like, so that's the John Bonet Ramsey murder. But here's the thing they shouldn't feel ashamed of themselves because one day we're all going to be robots. <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't really <laughs> equate. Like, I, it, it's like pick a lane. <laughs> And that's it's what the, I like about it. It's great. It. It's like the only true crime podcast that's like therapeutic and also like super futurism <laughs> and also like you're literally solving cold cases, which is like but no the podcast to every does cold any case of those ever things. is take it easy. We're all going to be robots. <laughs> well, yeah. Sometimes it's just realize you're going to die. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have do you do, do you do you have a comment on that? Then I'd be a good interviewer. <laughs> If you don't, then I'm a bad interviewer. <laughs> right. Which part of it? <laughs> uh, just All the idea it. that you bridge those two worlds. That yeah, like I mean, um, I think I've always been like that as a writer. I've always tried to incorporate a lot of different elements um, to my detriment a lot of times in commercial pursuits. But um, in terms of artistic viability, you know, just creating something that, that means something to people. I never really think about, like you're saying, staying in one lane. Um, I, you know, something I say all the time is I go off the rails sometimes when I'm writing, and I could just switch subjects and just start talking about something entirely different. And I don't know. I, it just all seems right. like people appreciate it. So I just Well, the answer yeah. doesn't satisfy me at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think true crime is a really specific genre. Like, you have to be so into it to do these episodes. Yeah, well, I think, I think the correlation between the future and true crime for me and why I love it so much is that, um, you know, all of these... All of these cases that we're looking at, it, it's all leading to advanced technology related to detection. And so, I mean, if you look at the difference in technology today as opposed to 100 years ago, just in the context of law enforcement, it's just phenomenal. I mean, the changes have been unbelievable. So with the continuation of that over the years, we will continually create, create more technology related to detection. And All right, Ryan. Which one? Which one of us uh, killed the baby in the bucket? <laughs> uh, without more information about the victim, I would have to say that it was probably you. Ooh! Not only did I do it, but I said I did it earlier. <laughs> Cliffhanger! <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming to Harmon Town. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you. Uh, the nine one one hostess with the mostest. Thank you, Greg. Let's give it up for our guest, Ryan Krause, everybody. Cold Case Murder Mysteries. Cold Case Murder Mysteries. From the Cold psychopath to the sociopath. Spencer Crittenden. I'm Jeff Davis, your comptroller. Your mayor, of course, is Dan Harmon. Thank you all for coming down. Drive fast and take chances. Let's all fly off those cliffs. We're all going to die. Did you get any of that? It's a good show!